Welcome to a very special episode of the Nitpicking Nerds. We are scouring over 11,000 creatures in order to find out which creature is the best of the 252 types that there are. This video can serve as an encyclopedia for all of Magic the Gathering's creature types. We even define each one. Strap yourselves in because this is going to be a long one. Hope you enjoy. Advisor. Advisors are tacticians, corridors, ministers, or others known for their wisdom. Several honorable mentions for best advisor are Bruvac the Grandiloquent, Gaddock Teague, Glenn the Voice of Calm, and the widely loved Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. Taking home the trophy for best advisor is Imperial Recruiter, a very strong tutor effect that can be repeatable if you recur or flicker him. Aetherborn. Aetherborn are humanoid creatures made of aether and are only known to exist in Kaladesh. Aetherborn live very short lives and have parties to celebrate life during funerals because their time is so short. Since they've only been featured in two sets, Aetherborn are only featured on 16 cards. Gifted Aetherborn, Weaponcraft Enthusiast, and Gonti all make good cards in the right deck, but Yeheni, Undying Partisan, takes the proverbial cake. As a repeatable sack outlet that is hard to remove, Yeheni will be a darling in any aristocrat's list. Ally Allies are a class of people or creatures that have been joined together in an association for mutual benefit or to achieve some common purpose. In the case of Magic, that purpose is to fight off the Eldrazi invaders on Zendikar. Though only featured on Zendikar, allies still have over 90 cards. Almost all of the best allies are legendary. Akiri Lineslinger, Bruce Tarl, General Tazri, Mina and Den, and Zada are all great commander cards, but the best ally is no legend at all. It's Zulaport Cutthroat. Though other cards may have similar effects, Zulaport Cutthroat is one of, if not the best, aristocrat payoff. Angel Angel is a creature type used for humanoid beings with large feathered wings on their backs. Almost all angels are female, the only plane that seems to have male angels is Amonkhet. Angels tend to have high mana value, with only 18 angels of the 189 total having a mana value of 3 or less. Angels like Avacyn, Angel of Hope, Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, and my personal favorite card ever, Imperial Archangel, are big must-answer threats. Archangel of Thune, Karmic Guide, and Restoration Angel have great synergy in a ton of decks as well, but it's hard to beat one of the most popular commanders of all time in Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. She is simply too efficient of a commander to not be the best angel. Between her amazing art, versatility as a commander, and strength as a card, is it any wonder that we picked Atraxa? Antelope Antelope is a creature type used for cards that depict various swift-running ruminant mammals having long horns and a slender build. Having only been used on 10 cards throughout Magic's history, it was hard to pick a winner, because they were all pretty bad, but in the end we picked Totem Guide Heartbeast as an overcosted but budget Aura's tutor. Ape This is a creature type that has been used on only 27 cards. It's mainly used for depicting great apes, such as orangutans, gorillas, and chimpanzees. The only real honorable mention here is Utabi Orangutan with fun artwork for the whole family to enjoy, but Utabi Orangutan can't hold a candle to our pick for best ape, Kogla the Titan Ape. He kills creatures, he kills artifacts, he kills enchantments, is there anything this ape can't kill? Well yes, but we're not going to talk about that. Standing atop the apes on a metaphorical empire state building, he is truly MTG's King Kong. Archer Archers are combatants who specialize in fighting with a bow and arrow. If you want to make any creature an archer, all you gotta do is give it a bow. Avacyn Angel of Hope? Boom. Archer. Zergo Bell Striker? Boom. Archer. Blind Seer? Boom. Archer. Poison Tip Archer is the standalone honorable mention here as archers aren't the strongest type in the world. But in the end, Daryl, Hunter of Walkers, is our top sharpshooter. Daryl's ability to control the board and gain card advantage are simply unmatched by any other archer. Arkin. Arkin is a creature type describing mystical celestial beings that are heavily aligned with the principles of white, having obscured faces and always appearing on flying steeds. Arkans have a few good cards even though the type only appears on 17 creatures. For honorable mentions, we have Ashen Rider and Arkan of Valor's Reach. The best winged animal rider, however, is Arkan of Emeria. This card isn't very flashy, but it gets the job done, preventing players from storming off or even just double spelling, which is an important part of command. Army An army is an organized military force equipped for fighting on land. The only cards that make army tokens are cards with the keyword ability Amass. The keyword was only used in War of the Spark on 22 cards. Commence the endgame is fine in its own right, but Angrath, Captain of Chaos, is the best amasser. It has nothing to do with his amassing, though, and everything to do with his static ability, which gives all your creatures menace. This can make for one powerful alpha strike. Artificer Artificers are those that specialize in working with artifacts. Some artificers are merely mundane tinkerers, while others possess magical skill at their craft. For non-legendary honorable mentions, we have Fairy Artisans, Goblin Welder and Engineer, and Stoneforge Mystic. In the Legends department, we have Arkham Dagson, Psy Master Thopterist, and Joyra Weatherlight Captain, but none of those characters can rise above one of Magic's first protagonists, Urza, Lord High Artificer. Turns out, when you staple the Enabler to the payoff, the card ends up good. Urza is so powerful, he was one of the reasons for the banning of Paradox Engine. 
Assassin. Assassins specialize in one thing, killing. Assassins are amoral to the extreme, ending the lives of others for money or the thrill of killing. Most of the 60 assassins in Magic have some way of killing other creatures, whether it be from Death Touch, an activated ability, or any TV. Honorable mentions go to Murderous Redcap, Massacre Girl, and Thraxamundar. Sitting on the assassin throne is Queen Marchesa. She provides value on ETB as well as your upkeep if you're not the monarch. On top of that, her and her assassin tokens have Death Touch, meaning reclaiming the monarchy will be a breeze. Assembly Worker Assembly workers are creatures that work to, well, assemble things, sometimes even creatures like themselves. There isn't too much to talk about as only five creatures even exist with this subtype. The best of the best is Mistress Self-Replicator. Moving on. A Tog. A Tog is a creature type describing a species of small creatures known for their insatiable appetites and unusual diets. A Togs come in a very wide variety of forms, but most uniformly possess a humanoid shape, a reptilian or amphibian appearance, bulging eyes, and enormous toothy mouths. There are only 12 Atogs, and none of them are very strong. The most well-known of the Atogs are Psychotog, Atogatog, and our number one pick, and the OG, Atog. Sometimes you just can't beat the original. Auroch. The Aurochs are the extinct ancestors of domestic cattle, far larger than most modern cattle with a shoulder height of 2 meters and a weight of 1,000 kilograms. This is another rarely used creature type, only on a grand total of 4 cards, and they stink. The winner is Rhymehorn Aurochs. That is all. Avatar. An avatar is an aspect or projection of a larger power. Avatars are powerful beings, and while most avatars are benevolent, many are considered to be evil. For example, Hogak after he turned modern into a dumpster fire. Some honorable mentions are Diluvian and Sepulchral Primordials, niv mizzet Reborn, and the Ur-Dragon. But for our number one avatar, we have Muldrotha. She is an incredible value engine that demands an answer, or she'll just run away with the game. There is a reason it is one of the most popular commanders of the past couple years. Azra. Azra have the appearance of a horned human with purple, blue, or dark skin. Their horns have various shapes for different individuals. Is it just me, or do these people look like low-budget Star Trek aliens? Only known to exist on one plane, the Azra have but eight cards. Kel's Fight Fixer is far and away the best. She is a blue-black aristocrats commander, which is a nice change-up from the usual Rakdos or Orzhov. Badger. Badgers are short-legged, heavy-set, digging omnivores. The cream of the crop when it comes to badgers is simply charging badger. Some people may argue for Surly Badger Sore, but those people are objectively wrong. They're both great cards, but if you look closely, Charging Badger actually has Trample. Barbarian. Barbarians are unorganized fighters, usually from primitive and or uncivilized cultures. Many barbarians charge into battle in a state of madness, an ability that is reflected on several barbarian cards by abilities that require the player to discard. Many barbarians have first strike and or haste to represent their ferocity. The honorable mentions are Dragon Speaker Shaman and, of course, the Barbarian King from Clash of Clans. Godo, Bandit Warlord, is our top barbarian. His ability to combo off at any time with Helm of the Host makes him a threat in both the Command Zone and the 99. Basilisk. Basilisk is a creature type describing giant, many-legged reptiles that can turn their enemies to stone with their gaze. We honestly would never consider playing any of the 10 Basilisks in Commander, but if you have to pick one, go ahead with Turn Timber Basilisk. It's a really slow, really bad removal spell. Bat. Bat is a creature type used for cards that depict nocturnal flying mammals with wings formed from four elongated digits of the forelimb covered by a cuteness membrane and that may have echolocating skills. Of the 22 bats, only one has been printed above uncommon, and it's our pick for the best. Dirge Bat is pretty much only truly playable in a mutate deck, but every other bat is absolutely unplayable, so here we are. Bear. The bear type is used on cards depicting large carnivorous mammals with stocky legs, long snouts, small rounded ears, shaggy hair, clawed paws, and short tails. Though bear is a very popular slang term for a 2-2 two -two for 2 in Magic, the type only appears on 27 cards. A quick honorable mention to Ayula, Queen Among Bears, and Ruxa, Patient Professor. They may be more flavorful than our number one, but they aren't quite as strong as Goreclaw, Terror of Cal Sisma. He is a medium tier legend, but the best bear by a wide margin. Beast. Beast is a catch-all creature type used for large, monstrous, animal-like creatures. Since it's a catch-all, we see it on over 428 cards. Honorable mentions include Standard All-Stars Thragtus, Questing Beast, and Hydroid Krasis. Marath, Will of the Wild, and Nethroy Apex of Death are great commanders, but the top two beasts can pretty much win by themselves. The top honorable mention goes to Craterhoof Behemoth, and edging him out by the slightest of margins is Protean Hulk. The card pretty much reads, when this creature dies, you win the game. This card is so good that it was banned for years from Commander, and I have no idea why it was unbanned. Beeble. A Beeble is a magical construct similar to a homunculus, which is used by the researchers of the Telerian Academy as a convenient, easily summoned demonstration subject. Beebles have only appeared on two black bordered cards, on Bubbling Beeble and our best Beeble, Bouncing Beebles. Bouncing Beebles is bad, but boy, it better be bathing in your bulk box. 
Berserker. Berserkers are combatants who enter a frenzy in battle, gaining great speed and battle prowess. 105 different Berserker cards have been seen in Magic's history. The only two honorable mentions are coin flip partner Okaun, Eye of Chaos, and modern all-star Bloodbright Elf. The best and most Berserk Berserker is Vile Smasher the Fierce, a very strong partner commander that allows you to really play any colors you want. Add in the randomness factor and you have a fun and powerful commander. Bird. Bird is a common creature type for animals characterized by having feathers, hollow bones, and wings. They are usually capable of flight, though not always. Getting started in Alpha, birds have 289 different cards. Avon Mind Sensor, Baleful Strix, Cartographer's Hawk, Derevi Imperial Tactician, Kaikar Winds Fury, Yorian Sky Nomad, Stormcrow, and Teshar Ancestor's Apostle are the honorable mentions. Birds of Paradise flies high as our number one bird. The OG and arguably still best mana dork, Birds of Paradise is a CEDH and EDH staple. Blink Moth. Blink Moth is an artifact creature type used for cards depicting the odd, tiny flying creatures that are the very essence of Mirrodin and one of the plane's original species. The creature type only appears on two creature lands, Blink Moth Nexus and Ink Moth Nexus. The victory goes to Ink Moth because it has Infect and Infect is cool. Boar. Boar is a red and green creature type used for cards depicting wild pigs. There are 40 piggies overall in Magic. Ilharg and Yasharn are solid legendary pigs and Decimator of the Provinces makes a good crater hoof replacement, but Enray's Forerunners makes an even gooder crater hoof replacement. At 78 cents, this card is great in budget lists. Bringer. Bringer is a creature type unique to Fifth Dawn. They are shown as crystalline humanoid or beastly entities. There were five bringers, all conceived as manifestations of the energy of the five sons of Mirrodin. All five of the bringers cost seven. Pip, pip, can be cast for the alternative cost of Wooburg, are five fives, and have an upkeep trigger. The best of the upkeep triggers is on Bringer of the Black Dawn. He allows you to have your best draw every turn at the cost of just two life. Brushwag. A brushwag is an animal of varying size which looks like a heap of animated kindling. Its body is covered in twigs which make a characteristic noise when it moves. They're able to grow huge and mighty but spend most of their time as small as a hedgehog. For most of Magic's history, brushwag was the one and only, and therefore best, brushwag. Then, in 2020, he was dethroned by the stunning, the magnificent, the almighty brushwag. I mean, is anyone really surprised? Camerid. After mating, homerid females lay their eggs in large spawning beds. Each egg later hatches into an infant homerid, called a camerid, which vaguely resembles a many-legged crab with two spikes in place of pinchers, two long antennae, and a long fleshy tail ending with a pair of flippers. Upon maturing, the camerid grows or metamorphoses into an adult homerid. Camerids are only seen on tokens and only made by two cards. The better of the two is homerid spawning bed, a card we would never, ever play in EDH, which should tell you something about the other card. This might be my vote for least interesting creature in Magic. Camel. A camel is a humped, long-necked ruminant mammal, domesticated in desert regions as a beast of burden and as a source of wool, milk, and meat. The jinn often appear as white camels, and Necrotal are known to ride or to become black camels. All seven of the camels in Magic were printed at Common. Though none of them have a large impact on the game, Quarry Hauler can have a small one and that the rarest of occasions lead to a Planeswalker ultimating and you winning the game! Caribou Caribou is a large deer, related to the reindeer. Caribou is a token only made by one card and therefore the best card that makes Caribou by default is Caribou Range. Good job, Caribou Range. Sometimes all you need to do is show up. Carrier. Carrier first existed as a vertical cycle of four black Phyrexian creatures which spread disease. Plague Engineer is a sideboard staple in non-commander formats, but in terms of EDH, he's pretty bad as you never know what deck you're gonna face. Phyrexian Plague Lord takes the top spot simply because it's a repeatable sack outlet. Cat. Cat is a creature type used for felines, but I'm guessing you knew that already. Cats are awesome! In Magic, the term refers to both regular cats as well as other feline creatures, some endowed with sapients, such as lions and tigers. Cat has been used on 222 cards and has plenty of strong commander cards. Some honorable mentions are Arabo, Roar of the World, Kasali Pride Mage, Leon and Relic Warder, and Nethroi, Apex of Death. But the best of the best is an uncommon from Fate Reforged by the name of Teemer Sabertooth. His bounce ability often allows you to replay creatures over and over again to get ETBs and cast triggers while also protecting you from board wipes. In some decks, it even doubles as a combo piece. Centaur. Centaurs have equine bodies with human torsos at the withers instead of a horse neck and head. They have six limbs, four legs ending in hooves, and two arms ending in hands. Centaurs are known for their skill in battle, particularly as archers, heavy cavalry, and druids. Of the 65 centaurs, only three are worth talking about at all. The two honorable mentions are Nikia of the Old Ways and Corsair of Krufix. Carador Ghost Chieftain is objectively the best centaur though. And it's not just because this is my favorite commander either. I have lots of other reasons, I swear. Cephalid. Cephalid is a creature type describing beings that live in the depths of the oceans surrounding the continent of Otaria. They are anthropomorphic octopus-like creatures, having tentacles and a highly flexible body while also having a more developed skeletal structure than normal octopuses possess. Cephalids are able to live outside of water for a brief period, but they have difficulty breathing air and dry out if they stay emerged for too long without magical aid. We haven't seen a new cephalid since legions, which explains why we only have 15 of them. 
Cephalid Broker is an okay looter, but Cephalid Constable is just a bit better. If you can pump this card's power and sneak it through, you can pretty much KO somebody. This card got much better after the introduction of Mutate. Chimera. A Chimera is a mythological, fire-breathing monster, commonly represented with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a serpent's tail. The term can also be used for any similarly grotesque monster having disparate parts. We have seen 21 different cards sporting the type Chimera so far. The honorable mention goes to Commander Legends Limited Bomb Apex Devastator. The best of the best for Chimeras is Perplexing Chimera. If you haven't played against this card, consider yourself lucky as it completely morphs the game around itself. If the Perplexing Chimera player has any way to regain control of it after giving it away, they can easily run away with the whole game. Citizen. This is a class of people that simply live in a location. There are four cards that make citizen tokens, but none of those are as good as our best card, Mobilized District, which is a mana land that becomes a citizen. Cleric. Clerics channel the power of their faith in a cause or higher being into potent magic. Most clerics are part of a formal church, cult, or other religious institution and wield either white or black mana. White-aligned clerics specialize in healing and protection, while black-aligned clerics spread fear and pestilence and often share a bond with the undead. Cleric is one of the most used creature types of all time with 478 unique cards. We have lots of honorable mentions, so let's get to them. Remorseful Cleric, Selfless Spirit, Mother of Runes, and Stepmother of Runes, Angus Mackenzie, Grand Abolisher, Timna the Weaver, Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, Weathered Wayfarer, Micchaeus the Unhallowed, Academy and Arena Rectors, Ailey Eternal Pilgrim, Fiend Hunter, Mangara the Diplomat, and Priest of the Forgotten Gods. That's a lot of clerics, but none of them can hold a candle to Yogmoth Thran Physician. Yogmoth is one of the best cards in any deck built to play him, giving you a sack outlet, card draw, removal, and the ability to proliferate all on one card. He might be a bad guy, but he is one darn good card. Cockatrice. Cockatrices are flying creatures that can turn their enemies to stone, much like basilisks, and sometimes take the form of open source multi-platform programs for tabletop card gameplay. They have lithe, feathery, serpentine bodies with the head of a bird, two legs, and two wings. The best of the three cockatrices in existence is Fleet Feather Cockatrice. Yeah, cockatrices are pretty weak. Construct. Constructs can be thought of as robots or automatons and come in a wide variety of forms, often imitating organic life. Constructs are different from golems, which are created through magic, but there is some degree of ambiguity between these types in the game. There's a total of 144 different constructs, like Crystalline Crawler, Hangerback Walker, and Walking Ballista, all great cards in their own right, but it's hard to compete with something as strong as Metal Worker. In the right deck, this card can easily make 8 or more mana, which will totally put you in the driver's seat of any game. While yes, I would like to cast my huge threat 6 turns ahead of schedule. Thanks, Metal Worker! Coward. Cowards are people who lack courage in facing danger, difficulty, opposition, pain, subscribing to the nitpicking nerds, etc. They're timid or easily intimidated people. And of course, we have to give the award for best coward to the recently printed Craven Hulk from Kaldheim. He was raised by goats, but wins best coward by default because he's literally the only one. Crab. Crab is a creature type used for various predominantly marine crustaceans characterized by a broad, flattened head and trunk covered by a hard carapace with a small abdomen concealed beneath it, short antenna, and five pairs of legs, of which the anterior pair is large and pincer-like. We have seen 29 different crabs so far. It could be argued that Hedron Crab is the best crab due to its ability to self-mill, but we chose Ruin Crab over it because it mills all opponents for triple the mill. Apparently the strength of crabs in magic translates into mill? Crocodile. Crocodile is a creature type used for large aquatic reptile predators found in sluggish waters and swamps of the tropics. I would consider all 26 of Magic's crocodiles to be completely unplayable in Commander, but Grayscale Gariel is the least unplayable in my book. Cyclops Much like giants, Cyclops are enormous bipedal creatures very similar to humans in form. What distinguishes Cyclops is the large single eye in the center of their foreheads. They are few in number and possess great size and power. They are brute, solitary creatures who live in desolate mountains and swamps. There are only 29 Cyclops cards, and they're either really cool or really lame. Okaun Eye of Chaos is a sweet coin flip commander, but Borborygmos and Rage is the true winner. He isn't great, but he tries, and that's what's most important, kids. Douthi. Douthi is a black creature type used for cards that depict an insane horror-like race of beings trapped in the shadows of wrath. Jeez. These cards, as they appeared in the Tempest block, didn't even have the subtype Douthi. All 10 of the Douthi have the keyword Shadow on them. The best of them is Douthi Mind Ripper, who could be used as a bully card towards one player. Demigod. Demigod is a creature type introduced for Theros Beyond Death. Before that, a group of creatures that were also called demigods were featured in Shadowmoor and Eventide, but did not have the subtype. Of the five demigods that have the subtype, Anax Hardened by the Forge gets the thumbs up. Giving creatures a second or third life is great for any Aristocrats deck. Demon. Demons are powerful evil beings who are often difficult to control and exact a price from anyone who tries to deal with them. The average mana value of a demon card is 5.3. Yikes. 
Archfiend of Ifnir is solid for any cycling deck, Gyrudo can combo off with clones, Sire of Insanity can put everyone on even footing with hand size, and Gristlebrand is so good in Commander that they banned him. Seeing as he is banned, we'll have to settle for Liliana's second strongest demonic enemy, Razaketh the Foulblooded. If you're able to resolve him with just one or two creatures out, you will quite often be the winner of that game, because honestly, how many tutors do you need before you just win? Deserter. This is someone who has abandoned service or duty with the intention of never returning. Kaldoran Homeguard is the only card that makes deserter tokens and therefore is default the best ever printed. Don't desert people, it's not cool. Devil. Devil is a primarily red creature type used for cards that depict atrociously wicked, cruel, or ill-tempered evil spirits, having the power to inflict bodily harm and spiritual corruption. There's 32 devils in Magic and a few of them are actually pretty good. Bedlam Reveler has been a player in formats like Modern in the past, Xurzoth Chaos Rider is a unique commander with a little bit of devil tribal sprinkled in, but former standard all-star Mayhem Devil is just too good. Not only is he a payoff for any sack deck, but he also triggers opponents sacrificing, which could prevent them from comboing off. Dinosaur Dinosaurs can be bipedal or quadrupedal species. Elaborate display structures such as horns or crests are common to all dinosaur groups, and some have skeletal modifications such as bony armor and spines. Dinosaur only became a creature type with the release of Ixalan, but it was errata to a bunch of cards from the past. However, besides Regal Behemoth, all the best dinosaurs are from Ixalan. Nezahal, Atali, and Golta are all part of the same cycle and each great in their own right, but that triple threat is no match for the actual triple threat, three-headed mother of dinos, Zakama Primal Calamity. This card controls any board it's placed on, letting you remove creatures, artifacts, or enchantments. On top of that, she untaps all your lands when she enters, which can make her cost zero mana or even net you mana in the process. Dijin. Dijin are spirits of air or fire, commonly forced into slavery by mortal beings in order to utilize their immense magical powers, usually in the form of a wish. Dijin have been around as long as magic, but they're only on 52 cards. Inia is as nice as a commander, and Jazam's Jin's price tag of over a thousand dollars would have you think it was good, but Elsha of the Infinite is our pick for top Jin. This card will get you a ton of card advantage if your deck is built correctly. Add in the fact that all other Jin suck, and you see why this card is great. Dog. Dog, formerly Hound, is a creature type used for cards depicting carnivorous domestic canids closely related to the Grey Wolf, as well as sapient dog folk. For some reason, wolves, jackals, and foxes are kept separate, even though wizards lumps in every version of felines into cats. Rin and Sari are the cutest BFFs in all of Magic, but they fell short of winning Best in Show. They are edged out of the top spot by Kunaros, Hound of Athreos. This of course means that Kunaros gets the official title of Goodest Boy. Dragon Dragons are four-limbed, two-winged reptilian predators. These powerful serpentine creatures exist throughout the multiverse on almost every plane. They have formidable strength, and many of them also score high on intelligence and magical capabilities. Head shape, wing shape, body shape, scale colors, and breath can vary. Dragons are the 20th most used creature type. They're often very pushed, so we have lots of honorable mentions. Balefire Dragon, Scourge of the Throne, Shimmer Dragon, and Terror of the Peaks are non-legendary honorable mentions. We also have the two best Niv-Mizzets, Niv-Mizzet Perun and Niv-Mizzet Reborn, Scion of the Ur-Dragon, and of course the Ur-Dragon himself, Scytherix the Blight Dragon and Kakusho the Evening Star are two awesome mono-black dragons, and we can't mention dragons without mentioning some elder dragons too. Dragonlord Atarka, Arcanes the Strategist, and Nicol Bolas the Ravager. The top spot was between two Jun dragons. The silver medal goes to Korvold, who was so close to taking the gold, but Prosh, the Sky Raider of Care, has been terrorizing EDH since 2013. The fact that he scales with the game helps make up for his hefty mana value. Add in the fact that he's a two-card combo with food chain in the command zone, and you have a monster of an EDH card. Drake. Drakes are flying reptiles, similar to dragons, but smaller and less powerful. As such, we have a lot less to talk about. Ikite is one of the Nipigging Nerd's favorite cards of all time, so we have to at least mention it. And Purgan Drake goes infinite with a ham sandwich, but we pick Gilded Drake as our best Drake. A two mana mind control on a creature is completely insane. If your deck has any way to flicker it and get more triggers, you will definitely run away with the game. Not to mention, you can steal other players' commanders, which I hear are usually crucial to a commander deck. Dreadnought. Dreadnought is a creature type that has only been used once for the artifact creature card Phyrexian Dreadnought from Mirage, designed by Mark Rosewater. A Dreadnought is a type of battleship armed with heavy caliber guns and turrets. The term is also used to describe something that is among the largest or most powerful of its kind, which definitely suits a Phyrexian 1212 artifact creature with Trample. Drone Drone is a type that refers to simple, immature, or artificial life forms which perform tedious and menial work. Since we don't want to drone on, I'll just tell you Catacomb Sifter is the best one and move on. Although, I do love that card. Druid Druids are the primary green spellcasters. Druids, like clerics, are masters of magic that are powered by faith, often backed up with prowess in combat. Think of them as nature priests that are mostly green aligned. Druids are strongly tied to plants, animals, fertility, the element of earth, and the land around them. In the honorable mention slot, we have pretty much all the mana dorks ever printed, from Elvish Mystic to Bloom Tender. Argothian, Satyr, and Verduran Enchantress are also all druids. 
Beast Whisperer, Evolution Sage, Hermit Druid, and Kinnon are all heavy hitters as well. True Lane Teller of Tales? Now that is a Druid. If you have never seen this card in action, consider yourself lucky. If a player gets to untap with this card, the game's probably over. Dryad. Dryads are spirits of trees, taking a nymph-like or tree-folk form to relate to the humanoids that venture near their forests. Dryads are found on a wide array of different planes. Tender Shoot Dryad, Dryad Arbor, Willow Dusk Essence Seer, and Night of Autumn are all solid commander cards, but Dryad of the Elysian Grove gets the top spot for this one. Granting you an extra land drop and allowing you to have totally fixed mana make this sexy naked Dryad boy too hot to handle. Fun fact, this was actually errata to be a Dryad, probably because there wasn't any room for the word Dryad on the card. Dwarf. Dwarves are similar to humans, but shorter. Many males wear long beards and live in mines, although some of them are known to live outside the mountains and even on islands. Though the dwarf creature type may have its shortcomings, SRAM, Senior Edificer, stands tall nonetheless. <laughs> Ifrit. Ifrits are a class of infernal spirits with a fiery appearance. They are noted for their strength and cunning. For honorable mentions, we have Frenetic Ifrit. He doesn't do much, but he lets you flip infinite coins, which is pretty cool for a coin flip deck. However, in our top spot, we have Ifrit Flame Painter. All you have to do is get this to connect to a player and you are getting insane value. Some might argue that Cheaty Face is better and we would agree, but unfortunately uncards are not included in this video. Egg. Eggs are creatures in the developing embryo stage of a bird, reptile, fish, or invertebrate. When used on creature cards, they regularly turn into another creature type when a certain condition is met. However, when eggs are depicted on artifact cards, this is not always the case. The best of the half dozen eggs to choose from is the awful Ludovic's Test Subject. Don't count your creatures until they hatch. Elder. Elder was first used for the Elder Dragons, and later used on huge primordial entities and venerable creatures to denote their importance. All Elders are also legendary. All of the Elder Dragons and Dinosaurs have been mentioned in their respective categories, so we won't list them again. The best card, though, is not a Dino or a Dragon at all. It's a Titan. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, has run rampant in every format since his release and banning, but like I said in the beginning, we're just looking at Commander. Though not as crazy in Commander as 60-card formats, Uro is still an amazing card advantage engine that can totally get out of hand. Eldrazi. Eldrazi are an ancient race native to the Blind Eternities that have neither physical form nor color alignment. Their nature is ceaseless hunger, so they travel between planes devouring the mana and life energy until the plane's destruction. Three Eldrazi Titans were bound on Zendikar in eons past, Emrakul, Ulamog, and Kozilek. Emrakul warps biology, Ulamog warps physical properties, and Kozilek warps reality itself. It is unknown if more Titans exist. All non-legendary Eldrazi are extension of the three Titans, so it makes sense that the best of the best when it comes to Eldrazi are the Titans themselves. The three original Titans all had Annihilator triggers, which means if you untap with them, you could easily kill a player. Emrakul the Aeon's Torn is actually banned in Commander because she's too strong. The second coming of the Titans was great too. Kozilek is the weakest of the three, but still draws a million cards and dominates games. Ulamog answers the two biggest threats in play and then becomes the new biggest threat. Emrakul the Promised End? Well, this card is just insane. It is easily the best of the Eldrazi in our opinion. If you have your turn control, it is very likely you'll either lose the game on the spot or not be a threat for the remainder of the game. We talk about this card constantly as an amazing threat and win condition, so we'll move on to the next creature type. Elemental. Elementals are sentient beings composed of energy. The most common varieties are those of the classical elements, expressing themselves as air, fire, earth, and water elementals. Many more exotic manifestations have also been created, such as elementals of lightning, thorns, fungus, rust, and even somehow time. Elementals are the fifth most used creature type of all time. That means a lot of honorable mentions, so let's dive right in. Risen Reef, Shriek Maw, Bane of Progress, Flicker Wisp, Voice of Resurgence, Revelark, Skullbriar, The Walking Grave, Maelstrom Wander, and Nyxplume Ancient. Those are just the ones not from Zendikar. From Zendikar, we have Avenger of Zendikar, Ashaya, Ancient Green Warden, Yurik the Desecrated, and all three of the Omnaths. Which brings me to the best elemental, the fourth Omnath. All you gotta do is play lands, and boom, you're winning the game. If you're worried about him dying after you play him, don't worry, because he draws a card to replace himself, and the landfall strategy means you're always ramping. Elephant. Elephants are large mammals of the Pachyderm family. They have been seen on Rabia, Wrath, and Dominaria. The anthropomorphic Loxodon have been seen on Mirrodin, Ravnica, and Tarkir. Though Hamza raises an interesting question about animal rights on Tarkir, we picked Nasty Tarasti as the best elephant. He's a big, dumb removal spell that can answer any non-creature permanent, and if you need power, can blow up your lands to give yourself elephants too. He really wants you to flicker him or reanimate him. Elf. Elves are ubiquitous throughout the multiverse, second in prominence only to humans. Because of this, elf is the characteristic race for the color green. Elves typically live in forests and are close to the land. To keep the honorable mention short, I'm not going to list the mana dorks we already listed under Druids. Wood Elves, Allosaur, Shepherd, Edric, Spymaster of Trest, Deathrite Shaman, Oracle of Moldia, Reclamation Sage, Fauna Shaman, Nyssa, Vastwood Seer, they're all staples of many different power levels throughout EDH. The queen of the elves, though, is Salvala, Heart of the Wild. Her ability to make so much mana in any combination of colors, combined with her card draw ability, make for a card that will rarely disappoint no matter when you draw her. Elk. 
Elk is a primarily green-white creature type used for cards depicting large deer. Gigantha is a fun companion for a Wootberg deck, but Burnished Heart is a non-green staple. It's one of the few ways for a non-green deck to ramp lands directly in play. Thank you, Burnished Heart, for having such a big heart. I. I is a seldom used black creature type used for cards that depict magical sentient beings that appear as large, floating, single eyes. There's only three, and we pick Evil Eye of Ormsbegore as the best. Fairy. Fairy is a type used for creatures with human appearance, often small stature, magical powers, and a penchant for trickery. Alila, Rankle, and Una are all decent commanders. As for non-legends, we have Fairy Artisans and number one fey, Glenelendra Archmage. This card can negate two spells at face value, and if you can remove the counter from it to use repeatedly, you may be able to lock opponents out of the game. Ferret. A ferret is a weasel-like, frequently albino mammal that is often trained to hunt rats or rabbits. Jovid's ferret is the only ferret in magic. So that was easy. Fish. Fish are gill-bearing aquatic vertebrate animals that lack limbs with digits. Included in this definition are lampreys and cartilaginous fishes like sharks, rays, and mantas. Gurmag Angler is an eternal format all-star, but that doesn't count for anything in EDH, buddy. Wavebreak Hippocamp is like, okay in any flash style deck, but our best fish is actually a good card. Deep Glow Skate is awesome in any deck relying on counters of any kind. This fish makes it trivially easy to ultimate most planeswalkers. Flag Bearer. Flag bearers are soldiers or civilians who bear a standard or aura flame, i.e. either a type of flag or an inflexible but mobile image, which is used as a formal visual symbol of a military unit on the battlefield. Why is this description so long? They're people who hold flags. We pick the standard bearer over coalition honor guard simply for its lower CMC. Fox. A fox is a carnivorous mammal, characteristically having upright ears, a pointed snout, and a long bushy tail. The only commander playable fox in our opinion is Zerda the Dawn Waker. She's just training grounds on a creature, but that's awesome. Bonus points if you can build a deck with this as the companion. Fractal. A fractal is a curve or geometric figure, each part of which has the same statistical character as the whole. Because they are essentially formulaic representations of creatures brought to life, they can be mathematically scaled at size from tiny to enormous, making them effective companions for mages who still use them as playthings, pets, helpers, and allies in combat. Most cards that deal with fractals make tokens, but there is a card with the type and it is Essex, Fractal Bloom, and therefore, it's the best fractal. Frog. Frogs are tailless, stout-bodied amphibians, including the smooth, moist-skinned frog species and the warty, drier-skinned toad species. Spore Frog is one of the cutest magic cards of all time. Yargle is one of the memeiest, but the Gitrog monster? Well, he's just one of the best. There's a reason that he is one of the top commanders of all time. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out our Ranking Every Commander playlist. Fungus. Fungus is a creature type describing denizens that mainly thrive and feed on decaying matter. They possess vast regenerative properties and are capable of asexual reproduction through the sowing of spores. The best of the 46 mushroom people is Corpse Jack Menace. You know, cause double counters and such. Besides, I hear he's a really fun guy. Gargoyle. Gargoyles are grotesque figures of a winged humanoid or animal incorporated into the architecture of a building, usually in the form of a water spout. Sentient gargoyles are able to move from their architectural base and fly, despite their dense mineral nature. Magic is not the place to find a plethora of gargoyles. You might want to check out Disney Channel series Gargoyles for that. But Stonecloaker is our pick for best magic gargoyle, because it can interact with graveyards or save one of your more important creatures from removal. Germ. Germs represent Phyrexian microorganisms carrying phyresis. I would say avoid all these cards like the plague <laughs> for commander, but if you have to play one, maybe go with batter skull, I guess. It's really not much better than mortar pod. Giant. Giants are massive creatures resembling gigantic humans. Most are known for being dim-witted and violent. Aloro, Osgir, and previously mentioned Uro are a few great legends. Stone Hewer Giant is a solid tutor and Inferno Titan is pretty great if you can give it haste. Inferno Titan's stepbrother, Sun Titan, is our choice for best giant. He's a staple of white decks and demands an answer, since the value he gets you will be very high if unanswered. He's also part of a few infinite combos for those looking to play him in higher power levels. Quick dishonorable mention to my boy Grave Titan, he's not even a zombie and he's not even a good giant. Gnome. A gnome is a species of diminutive beings that inhabit the interior of the earth. They're inventive and adept at mining and tunneling. If I had my way, the top gnome would be bottle gnomes, but Joe wouldn't let me, so here is copper gnomes. Goat. Goat is a red creature type used for various hollow-horned, bearded, ruminant mammals living in mountainous areas and their domesticated relatives that are raised for wool, milk, and meat. Pathbreaker Ibex is the best of the 10 goats. This card will easily put games away if it gets to attack. So if you see one on the table, be sure to kill it on the spot or face the wrath of the goat of goats. Goblin. Goblin is the type that represents a race of diminutive humanoids, frequently encountered in underground warrens in mountain areas. Goblins are one of the most beloved tribes ever due to their comical and wacky designs. For the honorable mentions, we have Goblin Electromancer, Goblin Welder, Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, Clark the Thumbless, Krenko Mob Boss, Mizzix of the Ace Magnus, Tago Goblin Weaponsmith, and Vile Smasher the Fierce. 
Coming in at number one, our best goblin is unparalleled in power, Dockside Extortionist. With his price tag reaching $50, hopefully he sees a reprint very soon, because this card is completely bonkers to the point of it being an uninteresting design that a lot of players don't like. God. Although gods and deities have been part of magic for a long time, a special god creature type had to be introduced for the Greek-inspired Theros block, as the Greek pantheon was the very center of their mythology. Considering our small card pool of choices, we have a good number of honorable mentions. The Scarab God, the Locust God, Perforos God of the Forge, Thassa Deep Dwelling, Krufix God of Horizons, and Athreos Shroud Veil. Xenagos God of Revels was going to win, but then Burgi God of Storytelling was printed, and that card is awesome, so she's our actual number one. Golem. Golem is a creature type describing artificial life forms created by magic, typically with power stones providing them energy. There's some degree of ambiguity between golems and constructs which are powered by physical machinery. For golems, we have some dishonorable mentions, Phyrexian Triniform, Platinum Imperion, and Blightsteel Colossus. We think these cards are pretty poopy. The only honorable mention is ya boy Ginger Brute. The best golem, though, is an obscure gem known as Salm Simulacrum. You may have heard of it. This card is a great ramp piece in non-green decks and even draws a card when it dies. Gorgon. Gorgons are snakeskin humanoid women with hair made of snakes or snake-like tendrils. Incredibly deadly, these creatures are rare across the various planes. We've only seen 18 different Gorgons so far, and we can't count Vraska since she's only been on Planeswalker cards. Damia Sage of Stone wins not because she's crazy good, but because she's basically the only playable Gorgon aside from, like, Hithonia the Cruel. Graveborn. A Graveborn is a type of undead. Unlike regular zombies, they have red in their color identity. This type only appears on creature tokens. There are only two token makers, and they're Sekouar Deathkeeper and Balduvian Dead. I think Sekouar is way better, so he can live in the spotlight until more Graveborn cards come around. Gremlin. Gremlin is a black and red creature type, which for most of Magic's history was exclusively Phyrexian, until the Kaladesh block. Gremlins have an inclination to damage or dismantle machinery. It was hard to pick which one was the best, because they're all so, so good. But after much deliberation, we picked Ruinous Gremlin, because you can skull clamp it. Griffin. The head and wings of griffins are bird-like, and the body and hind parts are lion-esque. Mist Hollow Griffin is pretty bad overall, but when combined with Food Chain, it does make infinite mana, and that's enough to make it the best griffin. Hag. This is a creature type for cards that present a kind of malevolent female fairy, bearing the appearance of a wizened old woman. Fate Unraveler is Underworld Dreams on a Stick, and while not being insane, it's the best hag we have. Harpy. Harpy is a rarely used black and blue creature type for cards that depict ravenous, filthy monsters that have a woman's head and a bird's body. Disgusting. Ancient people really love mismatching animal parts, huh? The only legendary harpy, Ephemia, is the best harpy. She's nothing crazy, but she is very unique and has a cool design that can actually accomplish things in Commander games. Hellion. Hellion is mainly a red creature type used for enormous, worm-like creatures with a scaly, snake-like body, spiky knobs along their sides, and a ring of tentacles surrounding a toothy maw. Though there are only 20 Hellions, three of them are legendary, and all three of those are actually pretty good. Thromach and Ulash are red green legends with interesting mechanics, but Obosh, the Rakdos companion from Ikoria, is the best spiky worm like thingy. Vivian once tried to count his legs. True story. Hippo. Hippo is a creature type used on very large, herbivorous, four toed, chiefly aquatic mammals with an extremely large head and mouth, bare and very thick grayish skin, and short legs. Somehow, we have back to back Ikoria companion winners as Karuga the Macro Sage is far and away the greatest hippo ever printed. Hippogriff. Hippogriff resemble griffins but have the body and hind parts of a horse instead of a cat. The best of these is the quote unquote hay bear Hushwing Griff, which is a walking, or rather, flying torpor orb. Homerid. Homerids resemble large, eight-legged, bipedal lobsters between five and seven feet in height, although some homerids are crab or crayfish-like in appearance, possibly representing different sub-races. Homerid is the OG, with one of the most boring artworks and text boxes I have ever seen, but Viscerid Drone is just a tad bit better gameplay-wise. Homunculus. Homunculus, Latin for little human, is a blue creature type used for cards that depict artificially made but sentient and living miniature humans. These creatures are used for menial or dangerous tasks. Many homunculi just have the one cyclopic eye. Zindersplit is a great commander if you want a coin flip deck, but she doesn't come close to our top pick. Fibblethip is a blue elvish visionary with upside. If you're looking for a cool way to play this card, check out our deck tech. Link in the description below. Horror. Horror is a catch-all creature type used for horrible, black-aligned fiends and beings that defy normal descriptions. Horrors originate from different sources such as nightmares, scientific experimentations, and hellish planes. A surprising fact to us when making this video was that horror is the 19th most used creature type. There's a lot of great horrors, so let's get into the honorable mentions. Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, who has already made this list, Phyrexian Obliterator, Yarok the Desecrated, Woe Strider, and the Gitrog Monster, who has also already topped a list. Better than all those cards anyway, though, is the son of the best cleric, Crick. Being able to pay two life instead of black for spells is totally insane and can easily win the game soon after he hits the battlefield if the deck is built to take advantage of him. Horse. 
Horse is used on equine creatures. Large mammals with solid hooves and a flowing mane and tail, used for riding, racing, and to carry and pull loads. Crested Sunmare is a life gain and horse tribal payoff, but there's 35 other horses in Magic, and it isn't quite good enough to beat out Wavebreak Hippocamp. In any deck looking to consistently be casting spells on other players' turns, this horse will get an insane amount of card advantage, netting you up to three extra cards per turn cycle. Human. Humans are four-limbed bipedal primates of the mammalian class, but I'm guessing you knew that already. But did you know that they have a highly developed brain capable of abstract reasoning, language, and introspection? You did? Okay, well, the only natural plane where humans are known not to exist at all is Lorwyn. This is literally the most used creature type of all, and it isn't even close. There's over 1,500 more humans than the second most used type, Wizard. Needless to say, this has the most honorable mentions, so I'm gonna list them all really quick. Ahem. <clears throat> Archmage Emeritus, Dark Confidant, Jace Frince Prodigy, Sir Conrad the Grim, Izami Lady of Scrolls, Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow, Baral Chief of Compliance, Daryl Hunter of Walkers, Arena Rector, Kenrith the Return King, Arkham Dagson, Joy Weatherlight Captain, Send Triplets, Brea, Ethereum Shaper, Captain Sisse, Noble Hierarch, Mangara the Diplomat, Chulain Teller of Tales, Eternal Witness, Knight of the Reliquary, Mages of the Order, Mentor of the Meek, Marchessa the Black Rose, Grand Abolisher, Shaman of the Forgotten Ways, Sarah Ascendant, Imperial Recruiter, Notion Thief, Marin of Clan Toth, Thalia Garden of Thraben, Hermit Druid, Angus Mackenzie, Queen Marchessa, Snapcaster Mage, Arena Rector, Wait, I already said that, Venture Shaper, Savant, Mariki Rebarret, Ranger of Eos, Winota, Joiner of Forces, Tireless Tracker, Recruiter of the Guard, Spellseeker, and Agent of Treachery. The best human is a highly played partner by the name of Timna the Weaver. She's one of the best partners of all time and an all-star in CDH. I feel like I've been talking about humans forever, so let's just get on to the next type. Good job, Timna. Hydra. Hydra is a primarily red and green creature type used for serpents with many heads, each of which, if cut off, grows back. The heads are mechanically represented by plus one plus one counters. Hydras are beloved by Timmy's everywhere, and it seems like we get a new random Hydra in almost every set now. Turtle Hydra, Plant Hydra, Snake Hydra, Jellyfish Hydra, let's just print whatever. For honorable mentions, we have Steelbane Hydra, Gyrus, Waker of Corpses, Uvenwald Hydra, Collodian Hydra, and Apex Devastator. Just ahead, get it, ahead of the others is Zaxara the Exemplary. This card is an X spell tribal and Hydra tribal commander and even gives you the extra mana to cast those for maximum value. Hyena. A dog-like African mammal with four limbs that are longer than the hind limbs and an erect mane. Hyenas are noted as scavengers, but most are also effective hunters. This creature type is very rarely used and is only on four cards. The best of these hyenas is Yannick, Scavenging Sentinel. I think he might be one of the hyenas from Lion King, but Wizards has not confirmed this yet. Illusion. Illusions are incorporeal beings that are manifestations of pure thought and will, often aligned with blue mana. Phantasmal Image and Spark Double are both solid clone effects with the type. Palancrom, though, is a one-card combo machine. All you need is seven lands that tap for 12 mana, and you can make infinite mana with this card by itself. If you don't have that, Eldrazi Displacer will do the trick as well. I have no idea why this card has the text that it does. Imp. Imps are small, pesky, bat-like lesser demons. Putrid Imp is an awesome discard outlet, but Stinkweed Imp gets the edge by having one of the best keyword abilities of all time in Dredge. It also has weird, off-brand death touch. Incarnation. Incarnation literally means embodied in flesh or taking on flesh. It refers to the conception and birth of a sentient creature which is the material manifestation of a force or concept whose original nature is immaterial. Anger, aka Angry Baby, is an amazing card in any deck that is turbo filling its graveyard or discarding cards from hand as it makes granting your team haste trivially easy, and therefore wins our number one incarnation. Insect. Insect is a catch-all creature type used for crawling or flying little creatures, as well as larger and or humanoid variants thereof. The best of the bugs include Scoot Swarm, Wirewood Symbiote, Caustic Caterpillar, Cathril Aspect Warper, Mazarek Kral Death Priest, and Crash of Rhino Beetles. But our favorite insect, both in the game and outside the game, is Mothra, Supersonic Queen. This gives all your creatures a second life, and when they come back, they'll be even better than before, because now they have flying. Mothra also makes comboing off super easy. Jackal. Jackals are canine creatures that resemble real-world jackals. Most of the jackals are from Avonket, including the best one, Champion of Ronas. This card isn't too exciting, but it could cheat out a huge threat, like an Eldrazi. Jellyfish. Jellyfish are transparent, free-swimming, or flying, bell-shaped creatures with tentacles and stingers. Note that jellyfish, which are invertebrates and don't have gills, are not fish. Manowar may be Marshall Suckla's favorite card, but it's not quite as good as Hydroid Crasis. It's not as good in Commander as it was in Standard, but it's still a decent card. Juggernaut. A Juggernaut is a large, mercilessly destructive, unstoppable force or object. All Juggernauts are artifact creatures. There are 17 total Juggernauts, and the best one is a combo piece, Leveler. I mean, you don't have to combo, but why else would you be throwing away your library? Kavu. Kavu is a primarily red and green creature type used for cards that showcase carnivorous mutant reptiles with long, low heads, square jaws, and four or six legs. Flame Tongue Kavu, or FTK, is an iconic card in the Magic community, but it's not quite strong enough for Commander. Well, I guess neither is our pick for number one, Bloodfire Kavu, but it could potentially get you a five for one, so that's... something. Kirin. Kirin are based on the East Asian spirit of the same name, a chimeric creature with the aspects of horse, dragon, and deer or goat. They always have flying. 
Legends say that the Kirin walked upon clouds to avoid ever harming another being. Kirin are omens of good fortune and long life. A Kirin is said to appear with the imminent arrival or passing of a wide sage or an illustrious ruler. Only appearing in the Kamigawa block, you can imagine how strong these things are. Celestial Kirin is the best of the eight total, but it still only has homes in spirit tribal decks. Kithkin Kithkin are a quick and agile race of small humanoids, mostly associated with white mana. Kinsbell Cavalier is a must-have for any knight tribal deck due to his ability to make all knights ambidextrous. However, the master of the five head himself, Gaddock Teague, is truly a man amongst Kithkin. Playing against this card could be downright miserable. It can lock several cards out of your opponent's hands, and most board wipes can't be cast with him on the field, so he is likely to wear out his welcome very quickly. Knight Knights are highly trained combatants who are part of a formal army or cavalry, usually specializing in fighting on horseback with a sword or lance. Knights rank 13th among creature type usage in magic. This means lots of honorable mentions. Sir Conrad the Grim, Knight of the White Orchid, Corpse Knight, Cavalier of Flame, Alenda the Dusk Rose, Rafika the Many, Knight of Autumn, Cavalier of Thorns, Bassery's Lieutenant, and Knight of the Reliquary. Our number one knight is a staple of several different archetypes because of its efficiency, Midnight Reaper. This bad boy will draw you tons of cards, insulate you against board wipes, and help you assemble critical mass combos. Kobold. Kobolds are little creatures resembling a cross between a goblin and an imp. They have red or green skin. We haven't seen a new kobold since Legends, but Commander Legends changed that with Rogrok, son of Roga. Not only is he the newest by far, but he's also the best by about the same margin. Kor. Kor is a human-like race with blue, gray, or white skin. Male Kor have small barbells hanging from their chins. 58 of the 70 core cards are from the plane of Zendikar. Both Akiri cards get honorable mentions here, along with Giver of Runes. The top core is one that sees play in pretty much all formats it's legal in. Stoneforge Mystic. The best way to think of this card is a 3-mana Skull Clamp that can tutor other things if you already drew your Skull Clamp. Kraken. Kraken are massive fiends from the deepest reaches of the ocean. Krakens are usually very big and splashy. Think Rexiel the Risen Deep. For honorable mentions, we have a Rixmithy's Slumbering Isle, who is the only way to play a land in the command zone, so that's pretty cool. Our number one Kraken is Gyruda, Doom of the Depths. Yet another Ikoria companion taking home the crown for their respective creature type. This card is a two for one every time, but can also just win the game upon entering with clones and flicker effects. Lamia. Lamias are female monsters created when powerful emotions caused by the god's actions consume a mortal's mind. I did not know that prior to making this video. Gravebreaker Lamia is better than Thought Render Lamia. You now know everything there is to know about Lamia. You're welcome. Lamasu. Lamasu is a bizarre creature type with the body of a cow, a bird's wings, and a human face with horns based on the Mesopotamian creatures of the same name and appearance. Lamasu, much like Lamias, begins with L and only have two cards to their name. The better of the two is Hunted Lamasu. Sadly, we haven't seen any more Lamasu on Ravnica since, so we can only assume they've been hunted to extinction. Leech Leeches are aquatic, blood-sucking, or carnivorous worms, sometimes used by physicians to bleed patients. Leeches prey on and cling to other creatures. They're parasites. Putting a leech in your deck will drain it of power, because they also just suck. Jorbi Merklurker is the only one to even consider, but we would still avoid it. Leviathan Leviathans are immense, whale-like creatures that aren't necessarily found in the water. Most leviathans feature extraordinarily large mouths that could seemingly swallow the sea or the sky. Of these monsters, Zyrus the Writhing Storm is the best. His ability to make 1-1 tokens is almost unmatched by any other card in Magic. Lurgoif Lurgoifs are reptilian creatures with distinctive elongated limbs and large toothed mouths. They're primarily scavengers, and they come in a wide variety of shapes depending on their scavenged sustenance of choice. Tarmogoyf is a modern and legacy staple in our pick for best Lurgoyf, and is some of the highest power toughness you can get for 2 mana. That being said, it is not a good commander card. Lissid Lissids are parasitic or symbiotic beings of a slug-like or insectoid nature with six limbs and a tail, found on the Plane of Wrath. All the Lissids are able to become auras with different abilities. Dominating Lissid being able to become mind control is the best of these. Lizard Lizard is a predominantly red and green creature type used for any land-based reptiles with limbs and external ears. For an honorable mention, Whip Tongue Hydra is a board wipe for metas where you just can't stop those pesky flyers. But Frilled Mystic is our pick for the best lizard. It's basically just Mystic Snake, but a lizard, and that's good enough to be the best lizard. Manticore Manticores are sentient, ill-tempered monsters with lion-like bodies, wings jutting from the shoulders, a scorpion's tail, a human face, and a mouth filled with multiple rows of razor-sharp teeth. This Persian legend only appears on 10 cards. The best Manticore is the Rainbow Manticore himself, Chromanticore. It'll at least be good in your 5-color Voltron decks. Masticore Masticore is used for artifact creatures, which is to be distinguished from Manticores. While a Manticore is a flying, ferocious, red-aligned, lion-like beast, a Masticore is a non-flying, still ferocious, metallic, lion-like beast. Manticores are fleshy and flying, Masticores are galvanized and grounded. These monsters are pretty creepy, but not very strong. Usually Masticores are solid creatures that require you to discard cards. Spark Hunter Masticore can at least protect itself, so that is something. 
mercenary. Mercenaries are individuals who sell their services in combat for money. Mercenaries have a reputation for being thuggish brutes or dangerously untrustworthy cads, though some are honorable. The best mercenary is Deathstroke, but until the DC crossover, we have to settle for the Goblin Tutor Mob Catcher. Merfolk. Merfolk is a creature type for a race of aquatic humanoids. Merfolk are a tribe beloved by many players. These decks are often referred to as fish, even though fish is its own creature type. The best Merfolk legends are Kumena, the tribal commander, Arami, the new graveyard hotness, Tetsiova, the landfall commander, and Emery, the awesome artifact commander, and one that you may expect to be the best, but who will show up later in a different creature type. For non-legends, we have Kiora's Follower, which is a solid mana dork that can even untap rocks, and True Name Nemesis, which is a nifty, unblockable annoyance. Our pick for the best merfolk, though, is Thassa's Oracle. This is literally one of the most efficient ways to win the game that has ever been printed. Turns out, it's surprisingly easy to empty your library in Commander, and Thassa's Oracle has already been responsible for ending thousands upon thousands of games as a result. Metathran Metathran is a creature type used for a blue-aligned race created in Urza's Bloodline project. They were a storyline-based race, so they only saw print for a short period of time. Skyweaver is apparently the best the Metathran could do, so it wins number one by default. Minion Minions is a 2015 American computer animated comedy film produced by Illumination Entertainment and distributed by Universal Pictures. It is the spin-off prequel and third installment overall in the Despicable Me franchise. The film received mixed reviews from critics and grossed over $1.1 billion worldwide. Wait, oh, never mind. Minion is a creature type and class used for cards that depict those who work the will of overtly evil forces or organizations. Minions are black-hearted individuals who knowingly bring harm upon others through subterfuge or open malice. Phage and Xantar are both very interesting commander cards with unique mechanics. Braids is so evil she's banned. However, the award for best minion goes to Sadistic Hypnotist. If you have enough disposable creatures, this card can leave your opponents empty-handed and lead you to a quick victory from there. Minotaur Minotaurs are humanoid bull creatures which stand on two hooves and have bovine snouts and horns. Some minotaurs have a more goat or antelope-like appearance. Finding their homes in mountainous regions of the multiverse, minotaurs are fierce in combat and often very prideful. Some minotaurs have four fingers with two thumbs, while others have more human-like hands. Boros Reckoner, one of Joe's favorite cards of all time, Glenhorn Buccaneer, and Heb the Eternal are all pretty good in their own right. But Zendikar Rising's Morog Fury of a Comb is an absolute house. This is the easiest way to trigger extra combats ever printed. You don't even need to untap with him. Just play him, then play a land, and boom, extra combat. It's that simple. Mole. Moles are mammals adapted to a subterranean lifestyle with cylindrical bodies and small, inconspicuous ears and eyes. Mole is a relatively new creature type, seeing its first printing in Shadows over Innistrad. Of the two moles in existence, we picked Excavation Mole as the best. Monger. Monger was only used for a five-card cycle from Mercadian Masks. The five creatures of the cycle are depicted as strange-looking dealers in commodities. They all have abilities that may be activated by any player. None of these are very good due to the fact that the stronger they are for you, the stronger they are for your opponents. With Squallmonger, though, you can work with other players to deal with big flyers, which could come in handy, and unlike Warmonger, it doesn't kill itself. Mongoose Mongooses are slender, ferret-like carnivores that feed on rodents, birds, and eggs. Mongooses are especially noted for their ability to kill cobras and other venomous snakes. Nimble Mongoose was a legacy staple back in the day, but now rarely sees any play. According to EDH Rec, it is only in 66 decks, and in our opinion, that's 65 too many. Nonetheless, it's still the best mongoose in Commander. Monk a monk is a person who practices religious asceticism by monastic living, either alone or with any number of other monks. Originally, creatures with the word monk in their names bore the cleric type, but monk became its own creature type with the release of the Kamigawa block, and monks printed before that now have both types. Kamigawa block actually gave us some honorable mentions in Azusa and Dosan. Other honorable mentions include Elsha of the Infinite and Narset Enlightened Master, two very strong Jeskai commanders. However, as long as the starting life total of commander remains 40, Sarah Ascendant will remain the best monk. A 6-6 flying lifelink that comes down on turn 1 is completely insane. Each attack is is a 12-point life swing, which is usually enough to change the tide of most commander games, especially if your meta relies on combat. Monkey. Monkeys are relatively small primates, usually having a flat, hairless face. Unlike the larger apes, monkeys usually do have tails and predominantly live in trees. This creature type was used six times on black border cards and four times on silver border cards. Ravenous Baboons is the pick for best monkey, and when it comes to being the best, I guess you could say this card isn't monkeying around. We're not counting Modern Horizons 2 for this list, but if we were, pretty sure it'd be Ragavan. Moonfolk. The Moonfolk, or Soratami, are an enigmatic race of humanoid beings who are capable of flight and dwell in Kamigawa's clouds. Physically, they are slim, possess blue-gray skin, and have long ears which they wrap over their heads. Moloku the Clouded Mirror is one of the most efficient ways to return lands to your hand in the game. The ability even comes with extra little flyers if you care about that kind of thing, so he wins best Moonfolk. Mouse a mouse is a small rodent with a pointed snout, relatively large ears and eyes, and a long tail. This creature debuted in Throne of Eldraine as a token made by the card Enchanted Carriage. The only actual card with mouse in the type line is Canyon Jerboa from Zendikar Rising. So congratulations, Jerboa! Mutant. 
Mutant is a creature type for beings altered by unnatural factors, whether they be magical or biological. Our three honorable mentions come from the Cynic Guild on Ravnica. They're Experiment Courage, Biomancer's Familiar, and Rolesque Apex Hybrid. Sliver Overlord takes the title of Best Mutant, but that is only because we have not gotten a Secret Lair TMNT yet. Tell me you wouldn't buy that. Mirror. Mir were created as mindless servitors and act out a single role without question. However, there is said to be intelligence and emotion behind their sullen, mechanical eyes. Mebnark can see through the eyes of the Mir using the Dark Steel Eye. Mir Battlesphere is an old school commander finisher that doesn't quite hold up today. Mir Retriever has aged a lot better over the years. In the right decks, it's still one of the best ways to get artifacts back from the graveyard. It's also part of a lot of infinite loops. Mystic. Mystic is a creature type and class. Mystics, like clerics, are adept at channeling mana with their faith, but instead of devoting themselves to a religion, they learn magic through careful meditation. Mystic is a creature type that hasn't been revisited in a long time, and even cards with Mystic in the name, like Elvish Mystic, do not receive the creature type. There's not much to talk about with Mystics, so I'll pick Mystic Enforcer as the best and move on. Naga. Naga is a creature type introduced in Cons of Tarkir. They're snake-like creatures with a humanoid upper body and a serpentine lower body. Basically snake people, but not these snake people. Or these snake people. So far, we only know of two planes with Naga on them, Amonkhet and Tarkir. Kadena Slinky Sorcerer is a good value card, and Sidisi Brute Tyrant is a good Sidisi, but Sidisi Undead Vizier is a better value card and a better Sidisi. Sidisi is one of the top 100 most played commanders on EDH Rec, and for good reason, this is definitely the best Naga. Nautilus. The marine nautilus is similar in general form to other cephalopods like squids and octopuses with a prominent head and tentacles. They also have a spiral chambered shell with pearly septa. This shell can be used to make exquisite jewelry. Chambered nautilus and crystalline nautilus are the only two nautilus ever printed. Both of these cards are bad, but crystalline nautilus is a little less bad. Nephilim. Nephilim is a creature type unique to the Guild Pack set and the Ravnica Plane. The five rare creatures of the cycle have different appearances. Some are spirit-like, others are beast-like. Each costs four mana of separate colors. The excluded color is the enemy color of the middle two colors. Although Mark Rosewater admits that he should have made them legendary, R&D is unwilling to do a functional errata. The best of the five is Glint Eye Nephilim. If you can pump his power high enough and connect with the player one time, it could easily result in enough card draw to win the game. The honorable mentions are the other ones. Nightmare. Nightmares are terrifying monsters or evil spirits created by the unconscious mind. Nightmares occur in all colors. Though Nightmare has been a creature type since Alpha, 29 of the 60 Nightmares were printed in 2020. Cathral Aspect Warper, Nethroi Apex of Death, and Zaxara the Exemplary are all great commanders, and Lurus the Dream Den is so strong it's banned in pretty much everything except Commander. Better than all these is Fiend Artisan. He's a perfect fit for any toolbox type deck. He lets you turn your worst creature into your best creature every single turn. And if you have a better play than to activate him, don't worry, because he's also a huge beater that fuels himself. This card is a Swiss army knife. Night Stalker. Night Stalkers are malevolent black mana entities from Dominaria. They are roughly humanoid, but have elongated limbs, spiked hair, and long, sharp teeth. This creature type hasn't been used since Portal Second Age, and honestly, I'm glad because I have no idea what a Night Stalker really is. Brutal Night Stalker is our pick for best Night Stalker. If this was our pick for best, just imagine how bad the other 11 are. Ninja. Ninjas, also called shinobi, are masters of both stealth and armored combat who may find employment as spies, warriors, mercenaries, assassins. They're famed for their versatility. Secretive in the extreme, some ninja practice magic that further enhances their abilities of infiltration. Some ninja come together in clans, though many others are solitary rogues. Though there's only 19 black-bordered ninjas, we still have a ninja tribal commander in Yuriko. Though she's a very good commander, she's not really that good in the 99. That's why Fallen Shinobi takes our top spot. This card is an absolute must-answer threat. The issue is that you never quite see it coming before it gets value. I strongly recommend trying this card if you haven't yet. Noble. Nobles represent creatures that belong to the aristocracy of their race, either by rank, title, or birth. Many cards depicting kings, queens, or other aristocracy gain the type retroactively. For honorable mentions, we have legends Kenrith, Corvold, Muxus, and Lathril, which are all great commanders. Those might be great commanders, but Brago King Eternal takes the best noble spot for his strength in the 99 and as commander. This card can generate a ton of advantage with just one swing, acting as a way to re-trigger any ETBs of any non-land permanents and ritual by flickering mana rocks to untap them. Brago rules over all other nobles, making him the King of Kings. Noggle. A Noggle is a small humanoid creature, about the size of a dwarf or kithkin, with a hunch gait and an oversized head like a donkey's. Having only appeared in Shadowmoor, there's only four cards. We picked Noggle Ransacker as the best. It doesn't do much on its own, but if you combine it with a good card, you can actually get some value. Nomad. Nomads come from uncivilized tribes who wander the plains or mountains in closely knit groups. Avalanche Rider is an okay land destruction card, but Weathered Wayfarer is just an amazing card. This card would be the best nomad even if it only got basic lands, but it gets any land. With lands like Gaia's Cradle, Ancient Tomb, and Nykthos in the format, this card could easily go from card advantage to ramp. Nymph. Nymph are divine spirits who animate nature in the form of beautiful young nubile maidens who love to dance and sing. Shannon and Dryad is the only nymph to date, not from the Plane of Theros. We wanted to pick Dryad of the Elysian Grove as best nymph, but we said in the beginning, no repeats. So instead, Kestia the Cultivator gets best nymph. It really only fits in Bant Aura's decks, but once you're in that corner case of a deck, this card will be one you hope to play each game. 
Octopus. The octopus is a venomous cephalopod that prefers the solitary nature in the sea. Many octopuses are known to employ natural camouflage to help elude intruders. Before the release of Strixhaven and C21, we had Sea Dasher Octopus as number one, but now we have a number one we can be proud of, Octavia Living Thesis. Making this card cost blue blue will be no problem for Spellslinger decks. Combine this card with cards like Talran, Metallurgic Summonings, and Shark Typhoon, and send an army of 8-8s at your opponent until they die. Ogre. Ogres are massive, brutish humanoids with low intelligence and great bloodlust. For honorable mentions, we have Rurik Thar the Unbowed, Obeka Brute Chronologist, and Ogre Slumlord. As for the best ogre, we have Yatris, Maelstrom Wielder. His ability to give any spell cascade makes him a must-answer threat every time he hits the battlefield. Ooze. Oozes are unintelligent amorphous blobs that exist only to consume whatever falls in their path, getting stronger in the process. There's a bunch of strong legendary oozes like Kraj, Vanifar, and Mimeoplasm. Most people might even throw acidic slime into the honorable mention slot, but not here at the nitpicking nerds. Here, it's a dishonorable mention. The slimiest of all the oozes, though, is Scavenging Ooze himself. This card is a solid hate piece that can quickly become an out-of-control threat. Orb. In Magic, orbs are conscious, flying spheres. I only know this based on the one card that creates orbs, Phantasmal Sphere. Moving on. Orc. Orcs are a fierce and combative red and or black aligned humanoid race with brutish features and often greenish skin. Direfleet Ravager and Port Razor can deal some serious damage, but our number one card Brutal Horde Chief has some sweet potential for controlling combat. I mean, just read this card. It's awesome. Org. Org is a dominarian race of half-breeds between orcs and ogres. Sadly, Butcher Org is really the best we can do. Otter. Otters are semi-aquatic fish-eating mammals of the weasel family with an elongated body, dense fur, and webbed feet. Otters are adorable, but Wizards doesn't print enough of them. We have to settle for the poopy Eon Frolicker, which we don't even recommend playing. Oof. Oofs are annoying little humanoids, often collecting treasures or tinkering with artifacts. Speaking of which, while Kitchen Finks has some utility, Collector Oof is far and away the best of the bunch. He can shut down artifact decks by himself. Ox. An ox is trained as a working animal. Ox of Agonis is well trained indeed, hauling three new cards into your hand, even from the graveyard. It's a nice little beast of burden. Oyster. An oyster is an edible marine bivalve mollusk with an irregularly shaped calcified shell occurring on the bottom or adhering to rocks or other objects in shallow water. Some oysters produce pearls, but no oyster produces a decent magic card. Only giant oyster even exists, and it's poopy. Pangolin. Pangolins are normally found in tropical regions. They have a small head with an elongated snout, a long sticky tongue for catching ants and termites, and a tapering tail. As a defense tactic, they can roll up into a ball. Pangolins are adorable, just like otters. The best pangolin is Rich Scale Tusker, with a nice enters the battlefield ability that will at least pump up your team. Peasant. A peasant is usually an agricultural laborer, a farmer with limited land ownership, or in general, a person of low status. It's basically the opposite of a noble. Peasants really only have Giant Killer as good cards to represent them, but it's actually a decent commander card. I like it as a removal spell, tutorable by Ranger of Eos and Ranger Captain of Eos. Pegasus. Pegasus is a rare white creature type used for cards that depict winged horses. Boreas Charger Reign Supreme is really the only Pegasus worth reading. It falls right into that awkward period where they were trying and failing to make good white commander cards. Pentavite. Pentavite is a creature subtype which only appears on tokens, and Avite is an artifact creature created by an Avus. Pentavus is the mommy and it poops out little Pentavite babies. Pest. Pests are seldom used artifact creatures from Mirrodin. For a long time, it was only used on tokens. The return to Mirrodin also meant the return of the subtype, and we got a flavorful but mediocre pest in Signal Pest. The hardest part of this card to figure out is where this little guy's head is. Feldegriff. Feldegriffs are purple-winged hippos. It's also an anagram of Garfield PhD after Richard Garfield. Questing Feldegriff is the honorable mention, with the OG Feldegriff emerging as the best Feldegriff ever. Group hug all the way! Phoenix. A phoenix is a mythical firebird which can be reborn out of its own ashes. Their tears can even heal wounds, but only in the Harry Potter universe and only one single time and never again afterwards. Magic's versions of phoenixes are always bulk rares, unless Wizards throws us a curveball. Honorable mention to Arclight Phoenix with Rekindling Phoenix as number one. Sometimes they push the recursion a little too far, but this card's still average in Commander. Phyrexian. A Phyrexian is a completed creature from Phyrexia, New Phyrexia, or similar infested planes. They consist of a mixture of metal and organic matter and can appear in many forms. Phyrexians can often be recognized by features like dripping ichor, eyelessness, cysts, postules, or the expulsion of noxious gases. The creature type was introduced in Kaldheim and was retroactively added as far back as antiquities. The type was added to 226 cards, which is a lot, so let's hop into the honorable mentions. Atraxa, Praetor's Voice, our previous Angel winner, Rudiclad, Telcor Engineer, all five of the original Praetors, Azuri, Claw of Progress, Crick, Son of Yogmoth, our previous Horror winner, Phyrexian Metamorph, Suture Priest, and Wormcoil Engine. We can't use repeats, so Elishnorn has to make way for Vorinclax, Monstrous Raider. A counter doubler that can be in your command zone is no joke. Vorinclax's Kaldheim form will allow you to ultimate planeswalkers like nobody's business, and even stifle anyone trying to put counters on their own creatures. Pilot. 
Pilots are proficient at riding vehicles. Creatures with the type have an ability that somehow cares about crewing vehicles. Many of them, like Speedway Fanatic, give the vehicle an ability or a bonus of some kind. There's only nine, so I'm shouting out Gearshift Ace real quick and then giving real props to the only solid pilot thus far, Dapala Pilot Exemplar. I mean, it's in her name. Pincher. A pincher is a colorless creature. They appear as short, stocky, bipedal, hairless creatures with a beast-like head and pincher-like hands. Pincher is a token made by Summoning Station exclusively. The card is actually pretty good on a heavy artifact deck, so I'd recommend trying it out. Pirate. Pirates are motley fighters and scoundrels who sail the seas and skies to loot and plunder their unsuspecting victims. Pirates are famed and feared for their unpredictability. There's 113 pirates in Magic, and most were released within the past several years. Honorable mentions go to Admiral Beckett Brass, Coercive Recruiter, Coastline Marauder, Dargo the Shipwrecker, Dire Fleet Ravager, Amphi Mutineer, and Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. Dockside Extortionist has already topped the Goblin creature type, and Hallbreacher got himself banned, so our vote for Best Pirate goes to Pitiless Plunderer. This creature does a very good Phyrexian Altar impression, providing you with tons of extra mana and enabling some game-ending combos. Plant. Plants are organisms that produce their own food from inorganic matter by the process of photosynthesis and that have rigid cell walls containing cellulose. This definition includes mosses but excludes fungi, in case you're wondering. Plants kind of stink and there's only 51 of them, so Genesis Hydra wins the honorable mention slot, with Sylvian Carrieted, the five-color hexproof mana dork, taking home the trophy. Praetor. Praetor is a creature type and class used for cards that depict leaders of dark forces. The ones we really care about, though, are the super awesome Phyrexian Praetors. Urbrask, Shieldred, Jinkataxius, Vorinclex, and the number one Praetor, both in the lore and in the games, Elishnorn Grand Cenobite. She presents a huge threat and has a static effect that wipes out all small creatures you don't control, even if she happens to die after resolving. The Praetors are awesome, and we can't wait to see more of them. Prism. A prism is an artifact creature which can be sacrificed for one mana of any color. This is another throwaway token made by only Diamond Kaleidoscope. If you're upset that we don't have more to say about prisms, let us know in the comments. Processor. Processors are extensions of the Eldrazi Titans. All processors have an ability that requires you to put your opponent's exiled cards into their graveyard for some effect. A lot of people have called this ability a design mistake. Blight Herder takes the honorable mention slot while Ulamog's Nullifier comes out as the best because the counterspell variant isn't actually that bad. Rabbit. Rabbits are soft-furred, long-eared, burrowing lagomorphs. There's only five, so we won't waste your time here. Quain Itinerant Meddler is your number one rabbit. Rat. Rats are small, omnivorous rodents belonging to the genus Rattus. These common and prolific creatures can be found on many planes and are often disease carriers. Burglar Rat, Rotting Rats, and Maronar are some surprisingly decent honorable mentions. Ink Guy's Servant of Oni emerges as the best rat with her ability to reanimate opponent's creatures and regenerate herself. Rebel. Rebels are individuals or groups of individuals that resist authority, including by use of violence. More often than not, they're motivated by their dedication to a cause and their devotion to fellow rebels. Some rebels may fight against oppression or, more fundamentally, for survival. Rebels may have been strong at one point in time, but now they're relics of the past. Big Game Hunter is a decent card in Madness, but the most rebellious rebel is Lynn Civy. Unfortunately, she's only as good as the rebels in your deck, so that kind of sucks. Reflection. A reflection is any creature that is an image of another creature, seen in a mirror, on a shiny surface, or in the air. Cryptolith Fragment, the Mana Rock, transforms into Aurora of Emrakul, which is the only card with the reflection type, so it wins by default. Good job! Some decks can actually take advantage of Cryptolith Fragment. Rhino. Rhinos are mammals with thick armored skin and protuberant horns that grow from their nose. Rhinos seem to have many different skills. Rune is an awesome blink commander, Rock's Faithlander is an all-star in life gain decks, and Siege Rhino single-handedly ruined standard for two years. The best Rhino is an overcosted selfless spirit named Dauntless Escort. He may be outclassed, but the effect he offers is so good that he's still a playable magic card. Rigor. Riggers are creatures that specialize in the lifting and moving of extremely large or heavy objects. Rigger only appears on two black border cards, and neither is good. Like, at all. Moriuk Rigger is the better of the two because at least it can get bigger than a 3-3, I guess. I don't even care, can we just move on? Rogue. Rogues live by their wits, using stealth and cunning to make their way in life. Many rogues are notoriously tricky and amoral, as their clever minds and silver tongues give them an advantage over most others. A good rogue could steal the clothes right off an unwitting target's back. Rogue is a completely stacked creature type, so let's get straight to the honorable mentions. Glasspool Mimic, Opposition Agent, and Agent of Treachery are all solid cards in the right decks. Edric, Spymaster of Trust, Negan the Coldblooded, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and Tiny Bones Trinket Thief are all amazing commanders of their own decks. We gotta give the best rogue award to Notion Thief. Notion Thief is an absolute house who warps games around itself. Pair him with a wheel effect and you have yourself a nice, easy, breezy win. As you can tell by this pick, good does not always equal fun. Sable. Sable is a creature type used for cards that depict small, carnivorous mammals. Sable is a species of marten valued for its fur. It was a tough pick, but for the best Sable, we picked the one. The only. Bronze Sable! No, literally, it's the only Sable. Salamander. 
Salamander is a red, black, and blue creature type used for several different types of tailed, short-nosed small animals with a soft, scaleless skin. Salamanders are not a well-supported tribe, but Amphimutineer is a solid card that can get you a virtual 4 for 1 after you encore it. This card is super solid in Bruticlad, Adrix and Neve, and Rune decks. Samurai Samurai, also known as Bushi, are warriors who have sworn their services and their lives to a single authority figure, usually a feudal lord. The Bushido ability representing their ability in combat is exclusive to Samurai. With all Samurai coming from the Kamigawa block, the bar is set extremely low. The only two worth mentioning are Tashiro, who is super weird, and our pick for best, Fumiko the Lowblood. Forcing other players to attack while holding back a big blocker can lead to lots of damage getting thrown at everyone but you. She also has a really cool eye scar. Sand Sand creatures are made out of sand. There are no cards with sand as a creature type despite the fact that Sand Golem is made out of sand. There are two cards that make sand tokens, Hazazan Tamar and Dune Brood Nephilim. It was a tough call, but we gave DVN the top spot over Hazazan because he costs 3 mana less and both are pretty good at making sand tokens. Saproling Saproling is a generic term for small plants and fungus creatures rather than a specific species. Though capable of reproducing by spontaneous generation, they are usually created by thalids or tree folk. 76 different cards make Saproling tokens. For honorable mentions, we have Artifact Mutation, Aura Mutation, Slimefoot the Stowaway, and Gave Guru of Spores. Our winner, Tendershoot Dryad, is a token-making machine. She makes 4 tokens every turn cycle. On top of making plenty of 1-1 tokens, she also gives them all plus 2 plus 2, making her a must-answer threat or the game will quickly be over. Satyr Satyrs are carefree woodland beings, represented as part human, part goat, which are noted as lovers of pipe playing and wine. They are ready for every physical pleasure. No, not that. Get your mind out of the gutter. The most pleasurable satyr to play is Satyr Wayfinder. He's a creature that will help fill your graveyard with creatures. What more could a Carador deck ask for? Scarecrow Scarecrows are vaguely humanoid objects dressed in old clothes. Scarecrow gives Batman a lot of trouble in the comics, but in Commander, I wouldn't worry about him too much. Honorable mention, Painter's Servant was somewhat recently unbanned in Commander, but he really doesn't do much, which makes me wonder why it was banned in the first place. The spookiest and best Scarecrow is Reaper King, but his weakness is his reliance on other Scarecrows, which kind of stink. Thank goodness for changelings. Scion Similar to Eldrazi spawns, scions are colorless and can be sacrificed to add a mana. Unlike spawns, they are 1-1 one, one instead of 0-1. The creature type is only used on tokens and always accompanied by the Eldrazi type. From Beyond is a nice card that can ramp you and give bodies early or late tutor up that big Eldrazi finisher, but it's not quite as strong as Sifter of Skulls. In any Aristocrat or Sacrifice deck, giving your creatures a second life is extremely powerful. It could turn your whole team into one giant ritual, or it can just give you two death triggers per creature. Either way, this card can definitely help you win games. Scorpion Scorpions are predatory arthropods with eight legs, a pair of grasping claws, and a narrow, segmented tail. The tail is often carried in a characteristic forward curve over the back, ending with a venomous stinger. With only 10 scorpions in magic, this is not the strongest creature type. Serrated Scorpion deals 6 total damage when it dies, making it far and away the best scorpion, sadly. Scout Scouts are individuals who are adept at getting along in the wild, often sharing the benefits of their prowess with others. Some scouts are part of a formal military organization and may have some skills in combat. Many scouts have abilities relating to lands, including Landwalk. For honorable mentions, scouts has the always fun Golos, Cloudblazer, and Celestia commanders Safi and Silvala Explorer Returned. Speaking of Silvala, her other card, Heart of the Wild, would scout out the top spot, but she was already our top elf. That means ya boy Tireless Tracker is the number one scout. It will make you so many clues and draw you so many cards, you just can't be disappointed with this card. Sculpture A sculpture is a three-dimensional representative form created from carved stone that is animated by magic. The only card to make these tokens is Doomed Artisan, making him the winner. Surf Surfdom is a peasant status in feudalistic systems. Much like Sculpture, there's only one card that makes surf tokens, and it's Sengir Autocrat. For all of those people talking about how Grave Titan goes infinite with Ashnod's Altar and Nim Death Mantle, just use this! It's two mana cheaper! Serpent Serpents are big, limbless reptiles with large heads. Unlike the similar landbound worms, the snake-like serpents live in the sea. Yorian is an awesome blink commander, but it isn't quite as good as AC, Tyrant of Gyre Strait. If you haven't faced down this sea monster in commander, consider yourself lucky. He quickly takes over the game with an endless stream of card draw, and even if you answer him, you can be sure he'll be back next turn, as AC decks always have enough mana to cast him a second, third, or even fourth time. Servo Servos are miniaturized automata powered by a low energy signal. Unlike Thopters, servos can't fly. Servos are a token only creature type and have been mostly used on Kaladesh. The best token servo maker in the multiverse is none other than Sahili, Sublime Artificer. She's like a young pyromancer, but her tokens are artifacts, so if you care about artifacts, this card will be an all star. Shade. Shades are powerful spirits and beings of darkness, typically employed by evil wizards who wield large amounts of black mana. Nurkana Revenant is our pick for best shade. This card is one of the reasons people think of black as the big mana color. She doubles your black mana and provides you with a sink for the mana. If you ask me, doing all that on one card is pretty... shady. Shaman 
Shamans are similar to wizards in that their magic comes from rituals, lore, and years of practice, but their craft has an emotional and spiritual component reminiscent of druids. For honorable mentions, we have Deathrite Shaman, Allosaur Shepherd, Fauna Shaman, Kikijiki Mirror Breaker, Marin of Clan Nel Toth, Ophiomancer, Oracle of Moldaya, Pawn of Ulamog, Sakura Tribe Elder, Tessiger the Golden Fang, Underrealm Lich, Woodfall Primus, and Yurlock of Scorch Thrash. All those cards are great, but we don't think they can stand up to THE green staple, Eternal Witness. I honestly can't remember the last green deck I built without it. The fact is, if you care about the type creature in any way, then this this card is an auto-include in your deck. Shapeshifter. Shapeshifters are a loosely defined group of beings capable of assuming other shapes and forms, often imitating other beings. The most well-known shapeshifter is Clone, but that card has been outdone about 10 times over the years. Stunt Double is Clone with Flash, Phyrexian Metamorph is a clone with Phyrexian Mana and could copy artifacts, and Clever Impersonator is a clone, but for everything. Our pick for best clone is actually not a strictly better clone, but rather one with a restriction, Glass Pool Mimic. It quickly makes up for only being able to clone your creatures by being an MDFC land. That means this card is either a bad clone or a bad land, and that adds up to a really good card. Shark. Sharks are fish with a cartilaginous skeleton, 5 to 7 gill slits on the sides of the head, and pectoral fins that are not fused to the head. Sharks are so cool that they have a full week dedicated to them on the Discovery Channel. With only 9 sharks printed so far, we don't have the largest selection, but Voracious Great Shark isn't too bad. It's a solid 2 for 1 that when paired with flicker effects can be extremely annoying. Sheep. Sheep are ruminant mammals of the genus Ovis, bred in a number of domesticated varieties for wool and meat. They also suck, like really bad. So bad that I refuse to say the name of the best one out of shame. <laughs> Siren. Sirens are humanoid sea creatures, typically female and winged, who lure mariners to destruction with their seductive singing. Surprisingly, the best siren is a guy. Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator is very tame on the surface, but underneath he's a cold, calculating combo machine. For example, just add Glinthorn Buccaneer and oops, you win. Skeleton. A skeleton is composed of the bones of a creature. In magic, the creature type is used for magically animated bones of deceased creatures. Some honorable mentions are Golgari Grave Troll, Reassembling Skeleton, and the beloved Skitherix the Blight Dragon. But creatures don't have to be big to be powerful. This man is just trying to feed his tiny skeleton family. It's tiny bones. I mean, just look at him and tell me there's a better skeleton. Slith. Slith are depicted as humanoids with large skull-like heads, formed from rock and or metal. Arcbound Slith is the best Slith, which is a title that means less than nothing because no one's ever playing Slith in Commander. Sliver Slivers are creatures that share a hive mind, which allows them to share their abilities with other nearby slivers. The best of the slivers? Well, it's the five color legendary slivers. Sliver Hivelord, Sliver Legion, Sliver Overlord, and the first sliver are all amazing commanders. But it's hard to beat the OG, Sliver Queen. She might not look flashy, but her ability to make 1-1 one -one slivers makes her a combo machine. And if you're a CDH player watching this video, then the first sliver wins for you. Slug Slugs are snail-like terrestrial gastropods without a shell. Most of them move by slowly gliding about. The best of the seven slugs in magic is Thermopod. It may not look like much, but it's part of a lot of combos. If you can't afford a Phyrexian altar for a sacrifice deck, try Thermopod and you will not be disappointed. Snake. Snakes are reptiles without arms. However, when appearing as snake folk, they do in fact have arms. Sometimes they even have four arms. The best armless snakes are Broodbirth Viper, Ice Fang Quaddle, Mystic Snake, Lotus Cobra, and the wheel loving Zyrus the Writhing Storm. As for armed snakes, Coiling Oracle is a cool Elvish Visionary variant, and the granddaddy of snakes is indeed armed, and his name is Steve. Steve is one of the best two mana ramp spells ever printed. It's simply rampant growth, but on a creature. Putting that effect on a creature takes the card from okay to amazing. Steve is a staple of the format for a good reason. We love you, Steve! Soldier. Soldiers are trained combatants who are part of a formal army. They are tough and disciplined, adept at fighting in concert and overwhelming the enemy. Soldier is the fourth most used creature type of all time with 700 soldiers as of Strixhaven. We have a bunch of honorable mentions. Bounty Agent, Captain Sisse, Jarena Kudro, Kinios and Tiro, the cutest gay couple in the multiverse, Ranger of Eos and his friend Ranger Captain of Eos, Rick, Steadfast Leader, Rune of the Hidden Realm, Saskia the Unyielding, and Joe's personal favorite card ever, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. You may have noticed we left Recruiter of the Guard off that list. That's because it's the best soldier. We all know that tutors are some of the strongest effects in all of magic, so a creature that can tutor for 6,000 different creatures is the best soldier. Soltari. Soltari is a white creature type used for spirit-like race of beings trapped in the shadows of wrath. Soltari were only used in Tempest and Stronghold. Soltari Visionary is a slow removal spell, but honestly, what else can you expect from these guys? Spawn. Spawn is a blue and colorless creature type used for cards and tokens that depict any creature that is regarded as the offspring of some stock, idea, place, etc. Elder Spawn is the only spawn, so let's just call it the best and get on to the next one. Spectre. Spectres are vicious undead creatures whose touch numbs the minds of their victims, robbing them of memories, represented in-game by discard effects. The only spectre we'd recommend to you in Commander is Thief of Sanity. It's slow and often won't do much, but if it sticks around, you can get some nice card advantage. Spellshaper. 
Spell shapers are amongst the most narrowly focused spellcasters. They are salesmen of magical spells and devote themselves to perfecting a single spell or selection of spells, relying on their mastery of their focus to make up for their lack of versatility. This type hasn't been used since Future Sight. None of the spell shapers are particularly exciting, but Dreamscape Artist is very unique. It offers you a repeatable way to ramp in blue, which is almost unheard of. Sphinx. Sphinxes are large and powerful creatures with lion-like bodies, human faces, and feathered wings. Some rival dragons in size and strength. Sphinxes have some really cool and unique abilities like Atempsis All-Seeing, Sphinx of the Second Sun, and Elegath Crossroads Augur. Unfortunately, the best Sphinx is completely boring and is an absolute staple, Consecrated Sphinx. It warps every single game it's a part of and requires an immediate answer or it'll just run away with the game. Don't even get me started on what happens when there's two Consecrated Sphinxes on the field. Spider. Spiders are arachnids, most of which spin webs that serve as nests and traps for prey. Big spiders scare the crap out of my Nipicking Nerds co-host, Joe Cherries. The only honorable mention for spiders is the legendary Thantus the Warweaver, who can make for a pretty chaotic game. Our pick for best spider is Dragon Lair Spider. It's a token-making machine that if left unchecked will overrun you with an army of spiders, which is why Joe Cherries always smacks it with a newspaper. Spike. Spikes have a slug-like body with two rows of pods down either side of the back and a pair of pinchers on the face. The only spike worth talking about is Spike Feeder, as it has the ability to go infinite with a handful of cards. It's also a CEDH channel. Spirit. Spirits are entities composed of energy that's related to a deceased person or a worship object or concept. Spirits are basically just ghosts. With 482 spirits, we have no shortage of honorable mentions. Remorseful Cleric, Basilica Bellhaunt, Barago King Eternal, Eidolon of Blossoms, Eidolon of Rhetoric, Carador Ghost Chieftain, my boy, Kodama of the East Street, Kakusho the Evening Star, Nether Trader, Dead Eye Navigator, and Selfless Spirit. The most powerful spirit is Yargle, Glutton of Urborg, by far, but we thought it was unfair to even include him. So instead, we picked Skyclave Apparition. This card is an absolute house that answers so many different threats. It's the best variant of an O-Ring we've ever seen, because it doesn't return the card when it dies, but rather gives you a worthless spirit token. Splinter. A splinter is a green flying piece of wood with cumulative upkeep. Splintering Wind is the only card that makes splinters, so it wins by default. Good job. Sponge. Sponges are absorbent, yellow, and porous. They are often accompanied by starfish and find work as fry cooks. Thought Sponge edges out Walking Sponge by a hair to be named the spongiest. Squid. Squids are marine cephalopods that feature eight small tentacular arms and two large tentacles. They often live close to sponges and starfish, but are extremely annoyed by them. Chasm Skulker takes the top squid spot as it quickly grows into a big threat that when it dies, he leaves an army of small threats that have evasion. Squirrel. Squirrel is a green creature type used for arboreal, bushy-tailed rodents. The squirrel will often move to underwater habitats in order to do science stuff and practice karate. Before this year, the best squirrel was Crows and Beast. Luckily for squirrel lovers, Toski Bear of Secrets is not only a good squirrel, but an amazing magic card. His card draw ability is top-notch, and the fact that he is indestructible makes him hard to remove. Is there anything this little squirrel can't do? Starfish. Starfish are invertebrate marine animals that have a body well stiffened by calcareous pieces that may protrude as spines. Starfish often live under rocks and do next to nothing all day. The strongest starfish in magic is sigiled starfish. Much like real starfish, it pretty much does nothing. Surakur. The gray-skinned Surakur have a shambling gait. They have the height of an average elf, but are heavier, with a dewlap hanging down from their chins, and long tails that drag on the ground. Surakur Spellblade is the best Surakur, but who cares about that? What happened to these things? They live on Zendikar and we haven't seen them since Rise of the Eldrazi. Did the Eldrazi kill them off? If so, that's pretty sad. Survivor. A person who survives, especially a person remaining alive after an event in which others have died. Two cards make the rare Survivor token, with the better of the two being Varchild, Betrayer of Keldor. Not much else to say. Tentacle. A tentacle is a flexible limb or appendage from a kraken used for grasping or moving about. Nadir Kraken is the only card to make this token, so hooray for Nadir Kraken. Tetravite. An avite is an artifact creature created by an avus, so you can probably guess the only card to make a tetravite is a tetravus. Woo! Thalakos. The Thalakos originally lived in Dominaria, maybe with another outward appearance. During the time of their plane shift, the Thalakos were entrapped in the conflict between the Dalthi and the Sultari, despite their neutrality. All three races were caught in the maelstrom of energy that surrounded Wrath and trapped within the quote-unquote shadows. Of the seven Thalakos in existence, Thalakos Deceiver is the best. It's a slow mind control, but if you have ways to recur it, you can easily get control of the best creatures on the board. Thopter. Thopters are small flying devices. Thopters stink as a creature type because the best one is Ornithopter. Let that sink in. Thrall. Thralls are creatures animated from dead flesh, usually with black mana, though some have been mono-white. The process of creating thralls is much different from animating the undead, as thralls are actually living creatures. Thralls are often used for ritual sacrifice as their sacrifices release mana stored in them. If this list was about cuteness, I would choose Squishy Boy Debtor's Transport, not close. Unfortunately, we did a power list, so gross-ass Maw of the Obsidat takes the win. It's an overcosted sack outlet, but if you go extremely wide, it could potentially be a win con. Tree Folk. 
tree folk are sentient trees and guardians of the forest they inhabit. There are many varieties of tree folk inhabiting a variety of forests. Though tree folk have been around forever, they only have 77 carts. Colthanor the Last You is the only honorable mention. Woodfall Primus is the best tree folk. It's an overcost of two for one, but it has about 300 different ways to go infinite. And when you do, it'll be lights out for your opponent as you just get to destroy all their non-creature permanents, including their lands. Then you can hit them with the sweet GG. Trilobite. A trilobite is a prehistoric marine arthropod with a carapace over the forepart and a segmented hind part divided longitudinally into three lobes. If you're wondering what any of that means, don't worry because so are we. We only have four trilobites to work with and our pick is Cryptic Trilobite. We aren't sure if this card is actually good, but compared to the other options, it looks like an absolute god. Triskelovite. Once again, an avite is an artifact creature created by an of us. Triskelovus, ladies and gentlemen. Troll. Trolls are large, bestial, ill-tempered humanoids that usually dwell in forests and have regenerative powers. Trolls aren't exactly the best driving commander, but they do have one heavy hitter on their roster in Golgari, Grave Troll. Sure, its power has literally nothing to do with the fact that it's a troll or even a creature, and we just care about the fact that it has Dredge 6. Honestly, if this card was a 0-0 with no text and Dredge 6, it would be equally as good as it is now. Turtle. The type turtle can be used for any reptile, either aquatic or terrestrial, with the trunk enclosed in a shell consisting of a dorsal carapace and a ventral plastron. With only 21 turtles so far, we don't have many choices. Steelbane Hydra is just another X Hydra with a little bit of frill on it. This card's really slow, but that's very fitting for a turtle. Unicorn. Unicorns are noble white horse-like creatures with a large pointed spiraling horn in the center of their forehead. They often are symbolic of chastity or purity. It's said that these elusive creatures can only be captured by a virgin, and I'm left wondering how you would ever find that out. Unicorns are hard to find. They don't care if you believe in them any more than you care if they believe in you. The best two unicorns are both legends that come from 2020. Second place is Lathiel the Bounteous Dawn for the green-white life gain deck, and first place goes to Emiel the Blessed, which is a strong, repeatable flicker commander. Maybe in 10 years when we have more unicorns, this could also be your unicorn tribal commander. Vampire. The most defining characteristic of vampires is their hunger for the blood or life force of others, despite not having any blood of their own. Other traits of vampires can include unnatural physical strength, enhanced healing powers, and the ability to fly, with their method of flight being through either natural or magical means. Many vampires are highly sensitive to sunlight and therefore only go out at night or in the shade, but this is not always the case. Vampires are one of the most beloved creature types in all of magic. For honorable mentions, we have Anya Falconrath, Blood Artist, Bloodgast, Cruel Celebrant, Alenda the Dusk Rose, Kalidus, Traitor of Get, Sangromancer, Twilight Prophet, Viscera Seer, Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose, and Yeheni the Undying. But you already know who the best vampire was. It's Edgar Markov. He's the OG vampire of Innistrad and our pick for best vampire. When you sit down across from this deck, you know you gotta be fast because they're gonna bring the beat down. Also, if you didn't know, Eminence is a pretty stupid ability. Vidulcan. Vidalcan are a tall, thin, hairless, blue-skinned humanoid race with a dispassionate view towards life. I believe the members of the Blue Man group to be planeswalking Vidalcan, but I have no evidence to support this theory. Nin the Pain Artist is an interesting general and the best Vidalcan for a commander. She isn't flashy and outside of the command zone, she's pretty worthless, but just leave her alone and let's move on. Viashino. Viashino are intelligent bipedal humanoid lizard folk descended from dragons, over whom they exert some power. The savage Viashino possesses lean but muscular builds and can be agile, quick, and vicious when necessary. Some people pronounce it Viashino, and some people pronounce it Viashino, and I'm here to objectively tell you that it is one of those two for sure. Zerlin of the Claw is an interesting card that can tutor dragons, and it's our honorable mention. Newcomer Yurlock of Scorch Thrash gets the Viashino gold medal. He brings back everyone's favorite old school magic rule, damage on the stack. Oh no wait, mana burn, which isn't nearly as cool. Either way, he's a house. His ability can burn people out really fast. Volver. Volver is a cycle of mutant abominations that resulted from the Wrathy overlay. These have a five-way tie for best because they are all the worst cards I've ever seen in my life. Wall. Wall is a creature type usually found on defensive creatures. They represent barriers for attackers ranging from physical objects to intangible forces. Most walls don't see play outside of Doran or Arcades decks as they have Defender, which is a huge downside. Pramicon Sky Rampart is a cool commander with a very unique ability, but ultimately it's not even as strong as Wall of Omens and Wall of Blossoms. Turns out Elvish Visionary is good enough to be the best wall. They're tied, but you can just pick your favorite. Warlock. A warlock gains his spellcasting power by making a deal with a demon or other dark being. Warlock was introduced in Throne of Eldraine and is now Black's primary spellcaster creature type. The best of the warlocks is life gain payoff Witch of the Moors. Every turn this card goes unanswered in life gain, it will get you a 4 for 0. Now those are some pretty good numbers. Warrior. Warriors are combatants who fight alone or in loose hordes. Unlike soldiers whose strength is in their numbers, a single warrior is often content to take on the world all by him or herself. Warriors favor brute strength over cunning, sheer will over tactics. Warriors have 780 unique cards and therefore lots of honorable mentions, like Alicia who smiles at death, Elvish Reclaimer, Azuri Claw of Progress, Kalidus Trader of Get, Krenko Mob Boss, Winota Joiner of Forces, OK Maviseri, and Species Specialist. These cards are all solid in EDH, but Renegade Rallier is the warrior taking our top spot today. It can ramp you with a fetch land, reanimate a small creature for value, or even combo off with things like Safi Eric's daughter. Weird. 
Weirds are the semi-sentient, walking paradox result of a fusion of elementals of opposing elements, such as fire and water or earth and electricity. All weirds that we know of come from the plane of Ravnica, and more specifically, the Izzet Guild. The legendary Melek Izzet Paragon is the weirdest weird, but also the best weird. The one thing I want everyone to know about this card is that you can look at the top card of your library anytime. So whenever a player takes a game action, just go, hold on, in response, look at the top card of your deck, put it back down, and then say, okay, werewolf. Werewolves are instinctive, seemingly human creatures which can transform into bloodthirsty, wolf-like beasts. Werewolves are often attributed superhuman strength and senses, far beyond those of both wolves and humans, or most sapient bipeds. In another universe, I'd be telling you how awesome of a commander Ulrich was for the werewolf deck, but unfortunately, we don't live in that universe! So instead, here's an uncommon. Duskwatch Recruiter is an okay mana sink, flips into a worse creature than what he is on the front side, and is our best werewolf. So do with that information what you will. Whale. Whales are marine mammals that can vary greatly in size. Distinguishing features include fluked tails and blowholes for expelling water. Though you would think the best whale would be a big fat fatty, it's actually a 3-3 flyer named Ethereal Forager. This card will almost always be cast for blue-blue, and if it gets off even a single attack, it basically draws you a card. This card isn't broken in any way, but it's a solid undercosted value engine. Wizard. Wizards are masters of channeling mana into powerful spells. They are ubiquitous throughout the known multiverse and are known to nearly every race. Wizards come by their powers in different ways. Some study for years on end to unlock the secrets of magic, while others are just born with the knack. Get ready for a buttload of honorable mentions. Orami of the Dead Tide, Archaeomancer, Avon Mind Sensor, Azami, Lady of Scrolls, Baral, Chief of Compliance, Dark Confidant, Emery, Lurker of the Lock, Glenelendra, Archmage, Jaleva, Nephelius Scourge, Joyra of the Gitu, Kest, Dissonant Mage, Krark the Thumbless, Kaikar, Winds Fury, Laboratory Maniac, Linvala, Shield of Seagate, Mages to the Moon, Mages to the Order, Marchessa the Black Rose, Mizix of the Is Magnus, Nekusar the Mind Razor, Niv Mizzet Perun, Kasali Pride Mage, Send Triplets, Spellseeker, Teferi Mage of Zelfir, Thassa's Oracle, Venser Shaper Savant, Viserysir, and Zerv the Enchanter. That is a lot of great magic cards, but Thrasios Triton Hero is simply in another league. Not only is he one of the best mana sinks in the whole format, but he also has partner, letting you play basically any colors your little heart desires. I could make a full video dedicated to this card's strength, but for today, we'll leave it at this and move on to Wolf. Wolves are mundane canines that exist in many different worlds. Next to zero of the 54 wolves in existence are commander playable. The only one really worth putting in any deck is Ukima, Stalking Shadow. A lot of his power comes from his partner ability as it gives free access to Kazer, Ruthless Stalker, and a third color. Wolverine. Wolverines are burrowing carnivorous mammals of northern forest regions. Wolverines are related to the weasel and have a heavy set body, short legs, dark fur, and a bushy tail. These things are really bad. I'm gonna say the name of the best one and just move right on after. Are you ready? Spell Eater Wolverine. Wombat. Wombats are stocky, burrowing, herbivorous marsupials, about the size of a badger. In Black Border, we currently only have one wombat, and it's the Great Rabid Wombat. Just look at that art. Worm. Worms are long, slender, soft-bodied, legless, bilaterally symmetrical, creeping animals. Reform is such a cool card, and our best worm. With any token doubler, this card will result in eight nine nines, which will be able to overrun players pretty quickly. Wraith. Wraiths are spirit-like apparitions that are supposed to portend the death of their beholder. These spectral undead are often shown wearing a hooded cloak that partially obscures its face. Street Wraith is the strongest wraith as it can basically make any deck only 98 cards. If you care about having creatures in your graveyard or losing life, then I highly suggest putting this in your deck because it's basically a freebie. Worm. Again, worms, with a U, are large, limbless, terrestrial reptiles. These worms have an endoskeleton, reptilian scales or plates, and a saurian head similar to a dragon's. Why does wizards use both worm with an O and worm with a U? Seriously, it's so confusing and leads to garbage like, I'll play Cavern of Souls, naming worm with an O. For honorable mentions, we have Armada Worm, the best phallic-shaped creature, Grothama, a cool commander, and World Spine Worm, the biggest of the big fat fatties. The best worm is a Phyrexian worm you may have heard of called Wormcoil Engine. In a meta where attacks matter, this card is a house with lifelink, death touch, and a dice trigger. Yeti. Yeti are ape-like humanoids living in cold, mountainous regions. When it comes to the card design of yetis, there is a lot to be desired. The strongest yeti is a 3-3 that taps to fight. Yikes. Zombie. Zombies are animated corpses. A pretty simple description. Zombies have been terrorizing magic since Alpha and have a ton of contenders for best zombie. Corpse Knight, Fallen Shinobi, God Eternal Oketra, Midnight Reaper, Neheb the Eternal, Nekusar the Mind Razor, Phyrexian Delver, Pelucranos Unchained, Underrealm Lich, Putrid Imp, Cedrus the Traitor King, Gravecrawler. All of these are awesome cards, but they fall a bit short of our number one pick, which is Micaeus the Unhollowed. This card is an absolute powerhouse. It gives all your creatures a second life and combos off with a ham sandwich. It's also half of one of the cutest named combos ever, Mike and Trike. Zubera. Last, and pretty close to least, we have Zubera. A Zubera is the faceless kami of a human who has been pulled into the spirit world. Zubera are said to attack solitary travelers in order to steal their faces. Whoa! Zubera all have death triggers and often check the numbers of Zubera that died that turn. Floating Dream Zubera is our pick for the best one. I guess if you can clone it and wipe the board, you can draw a ton of cards, but that seems like a lot of hoops to jump through. Woo!
Did you finish the whole video in one sitting? If so, hats off to you. I'd like to extend a special shout out to our friend Greg who helped edit this video. That's why it looks so awesome. Yeah, it looks super awesome. And special shout outs to each and every single one of our patrons. Love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Honestly, you guys let us do these big giant projects that are hundreds upon hundreds of hours of work. Thousands and thousands of words is actually worth it because you guys are supporting our career. Also, if you want to support our career, you can go to the TCG player link in the description, buy the cards you're going to buy anyway. But wait, now we get a kickback on the order? Oh my God, perfect. The perfect deal doesn't exist, except right now it does. Yes. So you go to the link, you buy the cards, you're going to buy those cards anyway. And, you know, you support the nerds. You should actually buy every single one of the the best of each creatures, including, but not limited to, Nick's Fleece Ram. I think that's really going to help you. And I, honestly, we don't need a tidbit. Uh, the tidbit is watch the video again. Yeah, it's a really long video. And we hope that you enjoyed it. Peace out, Tribe Scout. Thank you.